Good morning and welcome to the 2023 Mammoth Trail Fest. This is part of the Golden Trail World Series presented by Solomon. My name is Dylan Bowman, joined this morning by David Hilar. David, good morning to you. Hello everyone. It's it's early and it's cold, and uh, but it's going to be heating up today. I, I'm super excited to see how this race unfolds because the, the athletes are are really nervous. I don't think they know who's going to win, which is what you want in a race. There are certainly some hot favorites in the field, but it is a wide open race today. And we are now about 23 minutes away from the start time of today's 26K. And this kicks off three days of race live stream here from the 2023 Mammoth Trail Fest. Today is the 26K, again, part of the Golden Trail World Series, which we'll talk about here in just a bit. Tomorrow, a 50K, and then finishing off on Sunday with the Dragon's Back Ascent, the equivalent of basically a VK to cap things off on Sunday morning. It is a beautiful but crisp day here in the Mammoth Lakes area. A beautiful, perfect day for some hot and fast racing off the front. In fact, we were going to be, we we're going to look at the start line and, and see who's down there warming up, but no one's there yet. Normally yeah. at this stage, everyone's out and, and getting the hype, but yeah. it's, um, it's freezing on top and there's crosswinds. And so it's, I think that could actually pay quite an important part of this race yep. because I, I don't know if the athletes have necessarily come out expecting to be freezing for the first yeah. half of the race. So you see in the top left-hand side of the screen here, it shows 48 degrees Fahrenheit. That is an exaggeration for sure. <laughs> my phone said 35 degrees or my truck said 35 degrees as I drove here to the here, studio. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, but then uh, we had Rod Farvard send a text here to our production team uh, WhatsApp channel with a graphic from the top of Mammoth Mountain, which is, of course, the high point of today's race. And it showed 28 degrees Fahrenheit with a wind chill of 11 degrees Fahrenheit. So to our European viewers, maybe David can translate that into uh, Celsius. Yeah. But it is cold. In, in Celsius, that is bloody cold. Yeah, basically. yeah. So, well, tell us about this course because I've seen parts of the end of it. I've seen parts of the beginning, but for um, you know, for someone who hasn't raced here before, it's new to the series. Other than the twenty six k, what what can you tell us about how the uh, it is underfoot and and what kind of running we can expect from the runners today? Yeah, we do have a graphic which we'll try and pull up here with sort of an animation of the course. But we've been talking over the last couple of days about how it's sort of similar to Sears and all in that mm. it has a lot of fast miles in it, but then obviously just like all the great golden trail races, it does have ample vertical stuffed into the 26 kilometers on today's race course. So fast miles to start, then a really brutal climb up uh, a local test piece that is affectionately known as the dragon's back <laughs> and then off the top of Mammoth Mountain at 11,000 feet. Uh, that's the high point of today's course. Then they have a screaming fast descent all the way back down here into the heart of Mammoth Lakes, California, not far from where we sit. So it's a great course. I mean, and if we think of our runners, I mean, if we look back to Sierra now this year, uh, Remy had stomach issues. Um, he was sick. He couldn't mm -hmm. finish. Philemon, who didn't do well at Pikes Peak last week, he blew apart the field in the second half of mm -hmm. his pace. Um, I think the question today in the men's is going to be whether Patrick and Remy can get far enough ahead. And, and we have, we've never seen Remy and Philemon truly head to head in their pace. We don't know who is going to be the faster person on these descents. Yep. Um, in the women's, like Judith has come second in, in Sierra's now previously. She's, um, she, when she was injured, that was her, her race that she crashed out on. But from the, are there going to be any, any American runners that we've, we've not seen on the Golden Trail this year that you think can be starting to upset the cards and, uh, and really challenge them? Yeah. Yeah, a, a couple of really interesting Americans. Number one, Anna Gibson, who finished third mm. at Pikes Peak Ascent mm. just last weekend. Sort of a breakthrough race for her. But very young, just fresh out of college. Mm. She was born and raised in the Jackson Hole area of Wyoming. So very much familiar with mountainous terrain. But she also has the pedigree of being a Division One track and cross-country racer at the University of Washington. Of mm. course, she showed that she can compete with the best last weekend at the Pikes Peak Ascent. So very interesting young athlete who mm -hmm. I'm sure is going to have a very bright future in the sport, both on the Golden Trail Series and uh, beyond in future years. And then, of course, local legend Danny Moreno, <laughs> who uh, we were talking about before we went live here. She obviously mm -hmm. has a lot of experience on the Golden Trail World Series, although she hasn't done many of the races this year from memory. She was pouring her heart into OCC mm -hmm. as part of the UTMB 
World Series just a few weeks ago and unfortunately came down with an illness during race week and had to DNF. So as we were just talking about, she said yesterday, she's going Hail Mary mode today. <laughs> so Danny Moreno is sure to put on a show. And because, I mean, we last saw her properly on the tour, um, Mont Blanc Marathon. And, and in that race, she that was last year, she went out a bit too slow. And I think she she came third overall, but I think mm -hmm. she felt that was the, the race she potentially could have won against mm -hmm. uh, Sarah Alonso. Since then, she's had a run of bad luck. She had bad water in Badira, virus at, at, at uh, CCC, ACC. Um, do, do we get a sense of, of what kind of raw pace she's got on her at the moment? Do, is, is the fact that she's been concentrating more on ultra, will that, will that slow her down today? Or do you think she's actually got that top end race speed? Still? I don't think so. In, uh, I think it, it was at Boston this spring, she ran 238 for the marathon. So she absolutely can rip the fast mm. miles for sure. She obviously has a lot of course knowledge here living locally in mammoth lakes and she's motivated right and that makes a huge difference right she's put uh you know a lot into preparing for occ like i said that went sideways for her. and after that happens for any professional athlete you are looking to avenge those disappointments yeah. so she's looking to do so here on home turf and, today. and, I, and I do think there will be an advantage to knowing this trail it's not very technical we'd say from a european point of view but actually if you're running down it, it there's lots of stones. It, um, Danny described it to me as, as kitty litter. Yeah. Um, and so if you're not focused and if you, you, you will fall over, you will turn an ankle and that could slow some of the athletes down. And, um, and so da the fact that Danny knows this course will mean that she can flow through that far faster. Yeah, and that's the beauty of trail running, right? Is like every course, every race is different. And no matter where you travel to, and when you get on the trail, it has its own unique quality to it, right? And the Sierra Kitty litter, as Danny calls it, is going to be a ubiquitous character <laughs> characteristic of today's race course and throughout race weekend. And we'll see a lot of it as they go up to the top of the Dragon's Back, where there's a lot of that soft pumicey terrain. So our viewers will get a sense as we look down at the start line here, people are starting to congregate. The energy is starting to increase here as we are only about 17 minutes away from the start. I think we've got around 700 runners today mm -hmm. who, are, who are going to be taking on the 20, 26K, uh, 1,500 across the weekend. So it's it's quite, a, it's a good field for a second it's amazing. year of a race. Exactly. So just to give a shout out to race director, Tim Tollefson, Mammoth Trail Fest was a vision that he had for years and years living here locally. And one of the things we were talking about yesterday, too, is, you know, David, living in Europe, many of the Golden Trail World Series races and races like UTMB really involve the local community mm -hmm. and really like come straight into town. Tim has sort of tried to execute that vision here locally in Mammoth Lakes. This start line for our viewers here is right in the center of the main village of Mammoth Lakes. So it really is activating the local community and involving the local community. There's a lot of peripheral events beyond the race weekend. And the fact that, like you said, 1,500 runners came here for just the second edition. It makes it one of the biggest races in North America by participation already and only its second yeah. year. And, and for me, Tim needs to work on his foundation story. That's the thing he's missing. You talk <laughs> about Pikes Peak. That was a race where a, a doctor wanted to prove that smoking wasn't good for you. And so <laughs> he sent some people up the mountain. The ones that didn't return were the non-smokers. So Tim needs to, to, to almost work back and try and think of some crazy story that he can then weave into that narrative. And uh, people love stuff like that. Yeah. So, I mean, if you've got any suggestions, messages in because uh, we, can, we can take your ideas and uh, it could be the future story of this race. Yeah. That is sort of a ubiquitous uh, storyline across a lot of different races that yeah. the origins of <laughs> people sitting in a bar saying, I bet you can't run up to the top of the mountain and back in under two hours or whatever, for example. You know, I know like Kendall Mountain Run and, uh, you know. Um, Even Western States West, was, uh, yeah. yeah. Western States, Imogene Pass is similar in, uh, in that way. I know fell running in your home territory is yeah. sort of always born out of those probably, uh, you know, bluster in a pub yeah. between two I, guys who've probably been overserved a little bit. And that's because realistically in the old days, it's too hard a run to actually do for pleasure from yeah. if you've not trained for it. And so, um, so you need that kind of motivation. But um, with, with this start, um, it's worth us talking about who we expect to see lead off the front because I, I, th I think in the mm -hmm. women's it's 
it's less clear in the first two miles, these really fast miles, mm -hmm. who's actually going to pick up the um, the baton and who's going to be wanting wanting to lead out. We've mentioned Arna Gibson. I mean, she's got a I think a 4.11, 1500 ma meter mm -hmm. pace, but. As such a young runner, it, it's not often you'll see someone just think, right, I'm confident enough to actually mm -hmm. lead out from the front. And so it's going to be really interesting to see who actually is, who's got their confidence up and and who's got the, the, the best pace over the first two miles, because that could really be... It could it could show us how how the finish is going to be as well because yeah. it's that raw pace that carries you down the mountain as yeah. well. Yeah. So going back to what we said earlier, and that this course really favors the all arounders, right? Mm -hmm. Not only the athletes that are good in the mountains, but people that have that raw leg speed. Those first few miles definitely are fast. A couple of the miles are actually on bike path of, as we pull up the animation of today's course profile. A really cool thing here. So again, yeah, you leave the t center of Mammoth Lakes, California, and you rip up the road, then hit a bike path for a couple of miles before dropping onto a fire road, climbing up a fire road, and then ascending the dragons back up to the top of 11,000 foot Mammoth Mountain, which you see there. You sort of go off the backside before traversing around back to the front side of the mountain, and then you're cruising super fast on non-technical trails all the way back to where we sit here, David. So 17 miles or so, 26K, about 3,700 feet of climbing in today's course. And like I said, it really does favor the all-arounders. And, and that climbing, it, it looks a lot steeper than the descent. Um, what it is, kind, yeah. is, is that switchbacks? Is is that technical? Um, I mean, is the the soft sand to run down can be horrible running up yep. if it's if you're sliding away underneath it um will that be easy to run in or yeah so the dragon's back like i said it's a legendary local test piece it's where a lot of the local trail runners do their key critical hill repeat workouts on and uh, it's a i think a very competitive strava segment as we look at this <laughs> beautiful morning in mammoth lakes and we'll have a lot of great drone visuals throughout the day but going back to your question the climb up dragon's back the lower part of it is wooded and it is more switchbacky it's technical in spots but not anything that will really challenge the professional athletes and then once you get above tree line that's when it really turns into more of that soft pumice sierra kitty litter which like you said is difficult not only you're dealing with the altitude the trail gets a little bit steeper and then critically underfoot it gets a little bit softer which obviously saps the energy for athletes like remy for example he'll run every single step mm -hmm. up to the top mm -hmm. of the mountain it'll be interesting to see for some of the other pro athletes especially if they're super hot out the gate the mix between hiking and running but for the most part especially compared to races like zagama or sears mm -hmm. and all the double vk that starts that race it's not steep it's more runnable and i'd expect it in the women's field i mean we saw at pikes peak judith was stomping up the uh, up the hill she, that's her preferred method of, of kind of racing up steeper climbs mm -hmm. so it wouldn't surprise me if she's doing the same here today now we are at altitude at mammoth lakes um and so this this could also be a factor we we know there are some athletes that remy has come to pikes peak in advanced uh, we've mentioned arna gibson is at altitude of Wyoming as well. And uh, similarly, people like Eli Hemming, Tabor Hemming, they, uh, they live in, uh, in Colorado and yeah. so are used to it. And, and there will be some runners who, while the European tour has come over here for 10 days now, that's enough to start to adapt, but not to fully adapt right. to altitude. So I, th I think particularly with the cold air as well, it makes the altitude feel even more abrasive on the lungs. <laughs> yeah. so, so it wouldn't surprise me if we, we do see a few athletes starting to struggle. And um, that was actually one of the things that was surprising to me about Remy smashing Matt Carpenter's legendary course record of the Pikes Peak Ascent last weekend. It was brought to my attention that he had been training in an altitude chamber at yeah. home in Switzerland, which helped him to acclimatize. But I think you're right. It'll be an interesting storyline throughout today to just see, okay, who are the athletes who live and train at altitude, mm. who maybe live a little bit lower, you know, the advantages and disadvantages and it is inherent in that are uh, you know obviously will probably show themselves in today's race yeah and, and actually last year remy came and, and ran pikes peak and he was at bar camp the halfway point on the course record and that's when he realized just how incredible matt's race yep. was because he continued at that pace into almost a death zone of going up to 4,000 meters. So Remy realized that he, he just didn't stand a chance of taking on that record yep. unless he was properly altitude trained. So as soon as Sierra's an hour finished, he, um, he moved over to, I think near Leadville 
and he's been staying there with Anthony Ferber um, ever since just having a long enough time not only to adapt to the climate to the, the altitude but to adapt slowly enough that he could still train throughout because a lot of the time if you do move to altitude quickly it means you can't run it means you can't actually keep your um, fitness even though you're adapting to the the air you lose your fitness in the adaptation yeah. so it, it's really hard to get that balance yeah and you know mammoth lakes is also famous in the track and field world for being an altitude training destination the mammoth track club was you know really famous um, maybe 10 years or a dozen years ago people mm. like dina castor and i know like meb kofleski some great american distance runners would train here it is a really good mix of sort of mountainous terrain that's great for trail runners i did my hard rock training camp here in 2021 there's a lot of triathletes and cyclists mm. that come here too you, you know as you see here california beautiful blue skies much yeah. of the year as we go back to our drone footage after seeing some of the pro athletes warming up um just off the start line here but yeah mammoth lakes one of the things i really wanted to emphasize for our audience here is it's just such a special place it's such a beautiful place it's off the beaten track the easiest way to get here is to fly to reno nevada and then you still have to drive three hours to get to town but really lovely mountain oriented local community a amazing trails that come straight out of downtown and you obviously have a lot of like faster more runnable terrain and then really easy access to the alpine as well and and having arrived here a few days ago it seems that the thing that was missing from mammoth was a trail fest because it's already got very established snowboard festivals it's got mountain bike festivals but um i've run around some of the areas yesterday and there's there's so much so much empty accommodation ready for a bigger festival yep. really yep. and so um hopefully in the years to come we'll see the impact that a trail running race can have on our community and there'll be a, a statue of tim up in the the main square rather than a statue of the the gentleman who started the skiing yeah. here in uh, in future years and this is this is iconic here david so this is the the lakes basin here at mammoth lakes and just off to the right hand side of our screen where the sun is shining on the mountainside that's sort of the beginning of that dragon's back ascent so this is sort of like the iconic area at least from a tourist perspective mm -hmm. of mammoth lakes the, the lakes basin here and then far off in the distance there you can access the pacific crest trail which of course runs from canada all the way south to mexico and there's just endless running out here lots of big rocky technical peaks and then also some very well maintained softer non-technical terrain as well so uh, what, what mile do we think that they're going to hit sun then at what point are they going to suddenly feel like oh thank goodness um this isn't going to be an eternal <laughs> suffer fest <laughs> it's probably going to be in that the lower stretches of that dragon's back climb and once they get up to the top it's sort of like Pike's Peak where you can see the top um, for quite a ways yeah. before you actually arrive to it. It's less so than Pike's Peak where you're truly in the Alpine for miles and miles <laughs> this year. Do and we have audio here? So this is Tim, our race yeah. director. You may recognize him. He's a very good ultra runner yeah. himself um, alongside being the race director. So he's calling our, everyone to the start. It should be starting in around six, minute six minutes time. Yeah. So um, we're, we're likely to see the athletes returning. You can see Marlon Osser on the left there, who's uh, currently top five. This is Judith, who I, on the right, who I believe is the probably our favorite today. Um, Sadly, Francesco Papa, we saw, he, he's not running today. Oh, he's not? No. Oh, he, bummer. He's, I mean, he, he really suffered in Pikes Peak. He's, had, he's, he's just had a terrible run of luck with the Golden Trail. Fantastic he had a CCC. Great OCC. OCC, yeah. yeah. sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, second place behind Stian Angermund. As yeah. we look down at the start line here, that's Anna Gibson on the left-hand side there, David, uh, the athlete that we just talked about. The legendary Max King in the center of the screen. <laughs> Andy Wacker, there's Dan Kurtz. And like you said, that Tim Tollefson, not only you know great ultra runner, but a beloved member of the trail running community here. So this is Philemon on the left, and, mm -hmm. and Eli. Both of these people, yeah. I think, will be challenging for the the podium places. Um, mm -hmm. We spoke about Anna Anna Gibson earlier. Um, I was filming just above the tree line in uh, in Pikes Peak, and what amazed me was just how comfortable she looked um, with altitude and climbing. And she, of the of the front five runners she was the one that mm -hmm. looked by far the most relaxed yep. 
and she, like I said, just graduated from college uh, a little bit earlier in the late spring of this year. And it's really interesting now, David, to see athletes like Anna Gibson. We also have mm-hmm. Mika Boudon Rousseau in the field here. They're part of the trail team, which is endeavoring to provide access and support to younger athletes who are coming mm-hmm. into trail running and, and really focus on the sub ultra distance, which is really ascendant, especially here in North America. But to see the two of them get professional racing contracts with Brooks in their cases straight out of college just to do trail running. It's sort of a, a new thing uh, that's sort of representative of this next generation of the sport. And and, and actually, the, the, the that's probably the big difference between American runners and European runners. There, there is more support in an early age in Europe. And the fact that that's now changing means in kind of two, three, four, five years time, we're going to see far more champions coming yep. across. And, and also, I mean, um, if you if you think of Anna, she's got a, a 4.11. I think she came eighth in the Nationals, um, 1500s. And so the fact that she can do that and, and run trail as well is, is really the the pathway to the future of yep. American trail running. Now, one person we haven't spoken about yet is is Sara Alonso, and um, she's been injured all of this year until last week, Pikes Peak, where she came an, an astounding fifth, given her her lack of racing before that. She actually has a long-standing friendship and rivalry with Danny Marino. <laughs> yeah, th- we've been talking about that, and I was actually going to ask you to say a few words about Sara Alonso, and uh, is it? Uh, Marilyn Osa, is that her name? Because she's yeah. she's sort of a newer name to me. I just followed her on Instagram like last week. And uh, of course, she had a great race at Pikes Peak as well. But she's a young up and comer. Yeah, I mean, Marilyn's only 20 now. She um, is also from the Basque region, similar to Sarah. And Sarah has been, um, Sarah's an encyclopedia for mm-hmm. um, for. for, for for competition for her because she knows everyone who could potentially be her and for a while she's been at saying Marlin's coming she won the um, Mont Blanc half marathon two years ago and, and last year came to our finals in Madeira um, the national finals and won overall coming fifth overall amongst the golden trail as well um, at the age of only 19 this race isn't ideal for her she's a very technical runner mm. um, she's she's not used to altitude near, nearest neither Sarah they live um, Zagama yeah. and, um, and and the region they're in is is very low for the the climbing you can get so she I think she's actually quite frustrated coming here and seeing the course she's yeah. one of the people who was hoping for something a bit more technical but well it's interesting I mean for somebody like her for somebody like mm. Anna Gibson at this point in their career it's all about building experience yeah. right and so yeah, just yeah. being here and racing against some of the world's best when you're in your early 20s you have you know such a long runway to develop yourself as an athlete and I think that's one of the really exciting parts of this new generation of the sport and actually if, if you could combine those two runners together you'd have a complete trail runner right there <laughs> like Arna's coming in with the raw pace and um Marlin's coming in with that technical skill and so um, that's that's what I love about Golden Trail is they are different distances, different races, but we are just about to start here. And uh, you can see the people, look, Anna's, Anna's taking to the front line. Yeah. This is, get, there's no Remy. Um, yeah, there's Remy's on the far left there. Oh, yes. Is, is this Remy with the glasses? Yeah, Remy with the long white, uh, long sleeve white t-shirt there. To his right is Chad Hall and Dan Kurtz, two great Americans who should be challengers here today. To Remy's left, that's Philemon Kirigo, but I no, believe, but right? Pat, yeah, but Patrick Kiriaga, he's not on that front line. So he's clearly thinking Philemon's just going to tear it out and he's happy to sit behind until that climb. So um, now, now Patrick is the, the VK world champion. He was, a, there's rumors he was slightly injured last week. We yeah. don't know how much of that is post coming second. He was injured or, you know, sometimes the story changes. <laughs> but um, this is where mm. the two of them, when they race together, Philemon and Patrick, they actually talk to each other. They cheer each other on and they will be, they will have a strategy between them to try and break Remy. They yeah. are a team today. And so we're hoping to see that. I'd imagine there'll be a point that Patrick will pass Philemon and he'll be feeding information about Remy. So his mm. whole intent will be to try and blow up Remy, but also to get far enough that Remy can't build too much of a a cushion ahead of him on that climb. 
And we are off. And what a brutal responsibility it is to try and break Remy as we begin <laughs> our 26K here as part of the 2023 Mammoth Trail Fest. Some of the best athletes in the world taking on the Golden Trail World Series as we see them scream out of town. And, and look at that. I love seeing the camera runner. I think this is Pep. He's going as fast as he can. And already he's struggling. Just yeah. to give a reference for how fast they're going. Remy's leaving out. This, I wasn't, I mean, he's very confident. He, uh, he, he plays his cards um, honestly, but he's, he's clearly up yep. for it today. Yeah, and just to his right, again, that's Philemon, and behind him is Chad Hall, the younger brother of Ryan Hall, who's an American distance running legend. Chad Hall himself is no slouch. I think he ran like a 62-minute half marathon earlier in the spring. And Chad Hall, you know, has really made a name for himself, sort of was discovered on the trail racing scene at last year's Mammoth Trail Fest, where I believe he won both the 50K and the Dragon's Back <laughs> Ascent last year. Chad Hall is actually due to race all three events here this weekend. Oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, we know he came top 10 last week at Pikes Peak. Is he someone we could we should be looking at for a potential podium place? Here? I mean, he's one of the most raw, talented athletes in the field for sure. I think he's been training down in Big Bear, so he's got the altitude of climatization. I think he spends most of his time down in San Diego. But Chad Hall, yeah, like one of the most talented runners in the field as he de develops more and gains more experience experience racing on the world stage here mm. in trail running i think he'll he has the potential to turn into one of america's best and maybe one of the world's best and in, and in terms of this course is he a better climber is he better on the, the flat speed or he, he's a better flat runner and downhill runner yeah. i remember yesterday we were talking to garrett corcoran who's another american that's racing here today that we just saw on the screen and he was commenting about how in last year's 50k Garrett thought he was going to catch Chad Hall on the downhill and Chad Hall ended up putting like a minute and a half into him on very non-technical downhill terrain, which is very hard to do. So Chad Hall, a great downhill runner, just has probably some of the best leg speed in the field. And, and the, the fact that he's doing the 50K tomorrow, that's got to weigh on your mind, surely. You're going <laughs> to you're going to leave something in the tank. Or do you think if he's in a good enough position, he'll just write that off and bury himself I think he today. goes full gas today and then tries to hang on the rest of the weekend as we look at Danny Moreno there, local legend. So this is someone we haven't spoken about before, just behind Danny. That is Madalena Fluria. Mm. She is from Romania, a very fast runner as well. Fantastic half marathon time, 1.11. Um, but she has a real issue with, with nutrition. She can't mm. have breakfast. She can't take nutrition on the run. She was actually leading at the top of Sierra's and now, um, mm. ahead of Sophia Lockley. And she's someone who potentially could win today, but we're not going to know until right at the end because, again, she's not been able to take on nutrition this morning and w whether she can hold on throughout the course of this race um, without that nutrition. It will be the big challenge. Yeah. So again, here's where they intersect with the bike path, which will take them up to the lakes basin. They'll have a quick jog down to their left onto a fire road here coming up in probably a mile and a half or two miles. Then they'll have a short climb, make their way through the campground at the base of Dragon's Back Ascent. And then the race will certainly be on as they cruise all the way up to the top of Mammoth Mountain, which, like I said earlier, is all the way up at 11,000 feet of altitude. But it is a beautiful morning here in Mammoth Lakes. If you're just joining us, that temperature in our graphic in the top left is inaccurate. It is more like 35 <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit and much colder at the top of the mountain. I mean, the, the fact they can see the sun hopefully will give them yep. hope that it's not going to be freezing for, for too long. Now, that was Judith on the left there. I'm just trying to see if we can pick out any females ahead of her. It, I her. saw Danny just ahead of her, so I would guess that Danny and Judith are sort of off the front of the women's race here in the early opening miles. One of the things we were talking about yesterday too, David, is that because the downhill is long, runnable, and non-technical, mm -hmm. it's going to be difficult for people to make up time on their competitors on the downhill. Somebody like Chad Hall might be mm -hmm. the exception to that rule there as we... Wow, this is wonderful camera work as we catch back up to the front of the men's race here. And there's already a big and Remy. Gap. Yeah. Wow, they're really putting some distance in now. Yeah. Um, the fact that Remy's, I, I wonder if he's intentionally on his shoulder or is just running his own pace. Typically, Remy will run to a heartbeat, yeah. um, to a heart rate that he, he knows very well. 
Um, but Philemon has, has very much come out here to win today. And it wouldn't surprise me if he keeps up this pace um, significantly, even up the first bit of the climb, because he's yeah. not a bad climber. Um, but we saw in Sierras are now Patrick, his compatriot, um, estimated that he'd need over two minutes at the top of the hill mm. to be able to beat Philemon by the base. Um, slightly shorter course today, but um, it shows you his, his, his raw pace and downhill aggression. Yeah. As we look at Remy Bonet, the Swiss champion, my friend Mael yesterday called him a thoroughbred, somebody who in the last five years has really turned into one of, if not the greatest sub ultra distance athletes in the world. Remy Bonet still with tons and tons of runway left in his career, also a world champion ski mountaineer. And I did hear that after he broke Matt Carpenter's legendary course record at the Pikes Peak Ascent last week, and then he said, I'm coming back next year and I'm breaking two hours. <laughs> so it's going to be the trail running equivalent of breaking two for Remy Bonet uh, on that, the big hill in Southern Colorado next year. That, that's what a $10,000 prize pot does for yeah, you. That's, yeah. uh, I mean, it's totally worth it. If the, interestingly, the way he's... He's really had to change his, his, his training to mm. try and adapt to that. You, you've, we've mentioned the fact he's a schema runner. At the beginning of his career, he, he really wanted to be the, f the best ascender in the world. Yep. And nearly all of his training was focused on that. But Sierra's are now is the, the one race left on his list. When he was younger, he, had a, he wrote on his wall a list of achievements he wanted to, to do. One of them was Windsor Gamma. That was his first one. One of them was win Golden Trail Series. And the last one is to win Sierra's an hour. Yeah. And uh, he, this year probably was his year to do that. But he's, he's realized that he just hasn't had the, the flat out pace, the, yeah. uh, the ability to descend fast enough. And, and the more, even as he was getting a stronger climber, he was probably losing overall pace here. So here's where they intersect with this screaming fast downhill fire road so this is chad is this chad hall taking to the front no i or think they, just they're just behind that lead duo of remy and philemon but this is chad hall and patrick kip kip Diego. this is a very solid top four here and uh yeah we're off to a very hot early pace they're gonna head downhill for maybe three quarters of a mile or a mile before they start climbing again also on a dirt road so as you see very non-technical fast opening miles here going back to what you said about remy you know as somebody who's been in the sport for a long time and been a long time follower and admirer of his like you said he was known for a long time as being one of if not the best pure vertical mm. guys mm. guys and in the last couple of years he's really turned into one of the best all-arounders clearly no weaknesses in his game where in the past at races like zagama for example well he won that when he was was young mm. but in races like Dolomiths or whatever, mm. you know, he'd be mm. the first to the top of the climb. Mm. And then athletes like Steon or David Magnini or whatever would come and pass him on the descents. He's no longer a weak descender. Remy Bonet is truly the best athlete in the world at this point. Yeah, and, and Killian, before he went into Sierra de Now, he, he developed this thing called the VK10K, where yep. he'd, he'd run a vertical mile, he'd then do a, a 10K tempo run. Remy back in 2021, tried this and he he had a 10k time of 31 30 this year uh, the big difference he's made he's now on he did the same thing this year he had 29 37 for his 10k following a 32 minute vk i mean th this is this was faster than killian did his and it just shows you that he's he's really focused on getting that raw pace up and so in the press conference yesterday he was so full of confidence that He'd said last year at Flagstaff, people thought they were going to catch him on the down and he actually pulled away. And so I think he's going into today expecting to be leading at the top and leading by more at the finish. But um, he's never raced Philemon fully fit. Um, so he, that's the big question mark here. And potentially it looks like um, Chad Hall could be someone who's got some, some really good raw pace to, to come in that second half as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I had also heard that Remy got a new coach this year. He's doing slightly mm. more volume in his training. So that may be part of the reason why, you know, he's been able to develop more as an all-arounder rather than purely focusing on the uphill speed and strength. We should say here, David, too, I just pulled up the YouTube channel. We are broadcasting on the Mountain Outpost YouTube channel. So make sure if you are watching us to hit that subscribe button and jump in the chat. It looks like it is getting fairly active in there as well. 
and let, let us know where you're from, which, uh, which countries are you watching from and, and who is your race favorite today? Um, and um, one of the other aspects that we've seen with a lot of athletes that they, they, they struggle with early season, which now is, is less of a factor, is if you are doing schemo, and we've seen this with Killian, we've seen this with John Albon at Zagama, he just couldn't run the downhill because you, you can get your lungs working incredibly well, but if your legs aren't ready for that pounding, those downhills yeah. just, just destroy your quads too much, and you're not actually able to keep that pace. But this is our top four. They're, yep. they're very close still. And they're flying, man. They are absolutely ripping here in the opening miles as they start up the hill in their first taste of real climbing here in the 26K at the Mammoth Trail Fest. And off in the distance, you see the top of Mammoth Mountain. That is <laughs> their destination here in the first half of today's race. And going back to what you were just saying, David, we've been discussing, you know, just sort of like how the race might play out in terms of the competitive dynamic, understanding that the long downhill is non-technical as they mm. make their way to the finish line from the top of Mammoth Mountain. How might that impact the dynamic? In my opinion, it probably is gonna be the case that these guys are understanding the 26K as more of an uphill race where you need to get to the top in very good position because it's gonna be tough, like we said earlier, to catch people who have a lead at the summit because it doesn't favor people who have that mm more technical downhill uh, skill where you can chew up time on leaders that are ahead of you. This race is not like that. As we look at Chad Hall here, sitting in fourth place behind race leaders, Remy Bonet, Philemon Kirigo, and Patrick Kibnego. I mean, Chad, Chad's drifting off the back. He's really starting to, to, to lose that front pack. Mm -hmm. uh, do we think this is part of his strategy or do, is it potentially he's gonna have too fast? You know, this is just so interesting now, just the way the sport is developing. It is almost turning into professional cycling in a lot of ways mm. where like once the elastic is broken it's mm. difficult to catch back up <laughs> when i came into the sport and granted you know i focused mostly on the ultra distance stuff you basically knew who the winner was going to be you know hours and hours before they arrived at the finish line now it truly is a no hold, no holds barred knockdown drag out battle at the front of these races and the sub ultra distance stuff is sort of evolving into professional cycling where you need mm. to stay on the the leader's wheels as we see Remy just sitting in the slipstream of Patrick or of uh, Philemon here in the opening miles and especially if you're if you're starting to feel tired now seeing the peak so far away yeah. that's got to be crushing at least in Pike's Peak you're, you're hidden in the woods and you don't realize just quite how much climbing you've got left. Yeah. So, and we should also just reinforce here that the runner started at about 8,000 feet of altitude. They're going to make their way up to 11,000 feet of altitude. So if it looks like they're moving fast, also remember that they're doing so in a hypoxic state. It is not mm. easy for anybody, no matter how acclimatized you are, to be moving at these speeds at this altitude. But it is a beautiful blue sky, quintessential California morning here in Mammoth as Remy takes the lead here from Philemon. And as you can see, the, the change of gear there slightly from yep. Patrick, he's, he's tracking them down as the climb intensifies. Patrick is the world champion VK runner. Yep. He's a, and look look at the gap they've already put on, on Chad. You know, yep. just shows you how aggressively they're running against each other. We've had a request from YouTube just to, to check what the the times were for uh, for last year. So the course record is two oh five oh five by Patrick Parcell. Different course though this year. We should ah, we should mention. Interesting. Yeah. So we were talking to Danny Moreno, and of course she's a, a local runner here, and you know somebody who has an ability to speculate on how the change in course might impact the finishing time. She thinks it'll be slightly under two hours for the men here today, and a little bit over like two ten two fifteen for the women. Because um, the uh, just to, just to clarify, we haven't had much of the women's race yet. The plan is most of this is filmed by drones, and you can see the the cyclists we've had ready. That's Greg. He is now holding on to see where the women's are, yep. and so he'll now be tracking the women's. So we should be able to get dual coverage of them both because yep. uh, it's it, we want to make sure that we're we're giving as much exposure to to both male and female in this race. Um, yep. So we should be finding out shortly who's coming through as our top female. I'd expect to see Judith Weider, but um, that, that, you know, Anna, uh, Anna Gibson could also be up there and Danny Marino as well. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, it'll be very interesting as we see, you know, sort of the top 20 men pass through here. There's Max King, the absolute North American trail running legend <laughs> and icon. He did a 24 hour adventure race, I think just last week and then participated <laughs> in a Frisbee golf competition. So Max King, of course, showing his versatile skill set across every domain of endurance sport imaginable. Looking back down towards and there's, there's big gaps already. You yep. can see just how much that pace has broken up the field. Um, and, and other runners we, we'll be expecting to see coming through in the women's. We've, we've mentioned already, already uh, Malinosa. Um, Sara Alonso will certainly be up there um, with the pace. Sylvia Nordstar as well. She's currently lying fourth in the series and um, is a, a, a very fast downhill runner. So we expect to see her coming through the this field. This looks like Judith coming up the hill here, leading our women's race. And it looks like she's got competition on her heels. Sorry. That's our Romanian oh, athlete, yes. Danny Moreno there in white. So that's our top three. What was uh, the Romanian athlete's name again? That's Madalina Floria. Um, and this will be, if, if she's tactical, so last week um, we saw Sophia led out strongly, but by the first aid station was caught by Judith and they ran together for about 70% of the race, where Sophia, exactly like Madalena is doing now, just sat on the shoulder of Judith. And there's nothing more frustrating yeah. as a runner to, to have almost, it seems like there's a fly in your ear just buzzing around. You're doing all of the work, you're setting the pace. And it wasn't until the, the final two miles that um, Sophia could tell from the breathing and the body language of Judith that she was starting to struggle. And that's when she attacked and she put in significant time in the last two miles once that chain was broken. It could be that Madalena has, has done her research and has realized, actually, why push now? I've got the, the, flat, mm. spe the flat speed. Um, and a battle between those two would be incredible to see because Judith was the downhill queen um, before her inji injury. She was known at the time as being the, most te the fastest technical runner and the fastest descender on earth. Potentially, that's mm. Elise Ponset now. Um, but with the pace that Madalena brings in, she's got that 110, one, sorry, 111 half marathon. Between the two of them, I don't know who actually would be faster yeah. on these, these downhill slopes. And, and same with Danny Marino. She, you know, she's, she knows the trail as well, and she, she's, she can run extremely fast downhill. She's known yeah. for her smooth style Ooh. as well. It looks like Madalena took a little bit of a Ooh. digger there. And, and that just shows, it, it, we, we talk about it not being technical, but it doesn't mean that you, you can run it easy. Yep. You've got to concentrate the whole way. And, and, and she, there she goes, getting back out in front of Danny here very quickly, shaking off early bit of adversity with a little bit of a tumble here. But yeah, you're right. I mean, this will be very interesting. Different skill sets mm. between these runners here, of course. Judith, Judith Weeder, I think, comes from like an orienteering background, yeah. more of yeah. a mountain sport athlete. You know, Danny, like I said, had a 238 marathon early in the year, but is certainly a very skilled trail runner. And like we said earlier, she is in Hail Mary mode, according to her today. <laughs> she is not going to hold anything back here as she attempts to avenge a disappointment at OCC just a few weeks ago in Chamonix. And, and just to clarify, I've just got a text from uh, from Judith's husband, Gabriel. Hey, Gabriel. Um, and he, he said that um, Judith was five minutes faster than Elise at the Dolomis downhill. Wow. Um, so he clearly wants everyone to know that Judith is the faster <laughs> descender. What I would say is Elise isn't in the form that she's been in in previous years, but yeah, five minutes is a, yeah. a, a big, a big difference, uh, that's for sure. So We um, should also give a shout out to Judith, as you mentioned, her husband, mother of two also yeah. here, you know, and has taken the time not only to you know, raise a young family and also still racing as one of the best in the world. It's really inspiring to see. So shout out to Judith and all the moms out on the race course today and throughout race weekend. And, it, and if we're honest, we, I wasn't sure if we'd ever see Judith leading a race again. Mm. You know, she, when she had her, her second child, um, she, she had a stroke. It was, um, it affected the, the left side of her, of her body. She also lost some eyesight. And so she hasn't quite got the vision back mm. that she did. And so on, on technical trail like Dolomith's, she couldn't run with the same aggression. Whereas today, um, hopefully she can be full pace Judith, which is something awesome to watch. Yeah. But the, the three of them here together, this is the, this is where nutrition could play a, a vital part. We've talked about how there is that kitty litter at the end. 
and it's so it's so important that you keep your energy levels up because 30 percent of your your glucose is used for the brain um and so at the end of the races this is why we see people make mistakes and when people turn an ankle when they actually fall over a lot of the time it's lack of concentration or not fueling properly and so if madalina isn't able to take on any fuel it could be that she can't actually focus well enough to be able to give that pure aggression yep. in, in, into the downhill. And so she may need to make a move earlier if she actually wants to, 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 to get the lead to be able to hold it for the finish. Yeah, and the moves will need to be made going up the Dragon's Back Ascent. We should say that we are expecting to have follow cams on the runners as they make their way all the way up. To, ooh, and oh, and Danny takes a spill God. here too. Oh. So you'll see she pops right back up as well. But I think this is important to say, you know, these runners are already sort of, if not redlining, mm -hmm. near the, the upper end of their aerobic capacity. You know, this is one of the most competitive races. We see Remy Bonet opening up a little bit of a gap in the yeah. front of the men's race. And so this is, I mean, this is a significant move already. It, is, is this a dragon's back yet? Have not not the... quite yet. Not quite yet. They're going to make their way sort of down into a campground here. Uh, so this in, isn't even the steep climbing yet. No, so this not quite is actually yet. the fact that Philemon has been dropped on what isn't a, a steep, steep ascent just shows that God. actually he's going to be having to tear down this second half to try and catch him. Um, Remy is just such a beautiful specimen of a runner, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, even with this like long distance shot from a drone, you can tell that dude is an absolute piston. And of course, he has the results to prove it, having ticked off wins at a lot of the biggest sub ultra distance races in the world. One eluding him his his local race there, it's yours yeah. and all, but here he is following it up a victory at the Pikes Peak Ascent off to an early lead here at the Mammoth Trail Fest. And actually this will be something that next year at Sierra Zanau, today's race will play a part in how they feel, how confident they are, and how they race their strategy. Because yeah. this is the race that has been compared to Sierra's and Al from our series as being the one that road runners, fast yeah. runners can do. And if Remy can beat Philemon and Patrick here, he would have lost a bit of confidence um, after Sierra's and Al this year. And being able to, to, to take them on when they're in their prime and win will, will mean that he can go into next year and be able to race his strategy knowing that he's a better runner. Yep. And, and that is, is so essential when you're going into a territory which he wouldn't feel as comfortable at Sierra's and out as he would at, um, at, at some other races. Yep. And so, it, but here now, and look at this opportunity to run and look at that beauty. Yeah, a beauty and a, and a little bit of a gap here for Remy. So basically, they're going to be on this road here for probably only a quarter mile. He's going to take a hard right down through a campground which which sits along these beautiful lakes in the Mammoth Lakes Basin before they climb up to the top of Mount. Mammoth Mountain via the legendary Dragon's Back. And that's a decent gap there already yeah. for Remy. And and they'll be clocking probably around 5.15, 5.20 a mile, minute miles. Um, at the top of Madeira when I was trying to film him on raids, I realized just how quick he is um, when trail's not there as well. Um, so that's why we're using drone because trying to run, um, you, you can film these athletes reasonably well when it's steep um, uphill, but when it's as fast as it is here, um, even some of the world's best athletes can't film them properly. Yep. So uh, drone is, has been essential to make sure we, yep. can, we can get that footage. And we saw Greg Vallee here, of course, the fearless leader of the Golden Trail World Series, all kitted up with his mountain biking helmet on. And he's uh, apparently gonna be at the top of the mountain following the runners down on mountain bike. I don't know if he's gonna get to the top. I don't know if he's going to get that. Oh, enough. oh, so sorry. I'm being corrected here. This is him on the camera that yeah. we're looking at on screen. But here, he was so. planning to go to the top okay. and then film the down. But I'm, I'm, I'm worried he's not going to have the time to do that because yeah. they are moving. At so this fast. point, he's not getting up there before Remy. That's for <laughs> sure. Yeah. But we saw already that Danny had that fall. It looks like she's fallen off a little bit from the. Uh, from those those front two, yeah. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing for Danny's overall race. That's um, Tabor Hemming. Tabor going passed. through, and that was Sylvia Nordskar. That's um, Anna Gibson there. So uh, Anna's further back than I I thought she yep. would be at this stage of the race. Actually, um, she did say to me uh, last Saturday night when we were all out together that 
she, climbing yeah. in altitude was yeah. what really favoured her. Mm. So it might be that she's holding off until she hits the dragon's back before she makes her move. Super interesting. And yeah, we talked to her yesterday in our pre-race elite athlete interviews, and she was saying that uh, there's Alicia Shea. We should come back and talk about her too, Alicia Vargo. Um, but uh, what I was saying about Anna is that she came down with a little bit of an injury after the Broken Arrow Sky Race, which was in June, where she had back-to-back -back great races in the VK and the 23K, mm. was injured for much of the summer. So she was a little bit surprised about her fantastic third-place performance at the Pikes Peak Ascent uh, last weekend. But she also made the point that, you know, climbing at altitude mm. is sort of her strength. So we'll see where she sits when we get to the top of Mammoth Mountain and where she takes advantage of that big climb up the Dragon's Back. Coming back to Alicia Vargo, she was one of the stories of the Pikes Peak Ascent last weekend obviously a former pro mm. road and track racer sort of in her 20s left the sport for six years had a family her husband chris fargo was also a professional trail runner for a long time the two of them beloved members of the community but took a back seat to sort of start their family now have three young children and alicia shea alicia vargo i should say coming back from six years hiatus from racing taking home a really proud seventh place at the pikes peak ascent last weekend and i know she's excited to try and crack the top 10 here again today i mean if, if your comeback race after that amount of time off is seventh you've got to be it's amazing you've got to be tasting the podium within like a few months yeah right? you like, know the opportunities there if you come back from a six month injury for example you know it takes you a couple rust buster races yeah. to get back to form not so much for alicia vargo seventh place at the pikes peak ascent and following it up after six years off two races in six days <laughs> here in the top 10 or so yeah. in the lead of it the would women's be race. great to interview her after is actually yeah. just to see how her legs are actually yeah. after today because it, it does take a long time to to get your legs weathered for back to back yeah. that's for sure no so we're, we're just um trying to figure out who we're seeing here we don't think this is the the top three um we're seeing no they this in fact this is significantly later so remy and the top three have already come through here yeah. um it's harder to tell who these these gentlemen are um but looking back when we saw um anna and sylvia go through just behind them was marlin osa yep and um, She's currently sat in fourth in the series. Um, Sylvia's sat third in the series. And Marlin knows that she needs to finish top 10, but ahead of Sylvia today ah. to move up to, to third overall. And so the fact that they're so close together is, I think Marlin has, has, has probably got that game plan of just tracking her until the hill and trying to then. That looks like Danny you... screaming down in the lead of the women's race. Yeah, that that's Danny Moreno there running through the parking lot and it looks like followed closely is by that Judith in the blue. Judith in the blue has just taken the hairpin followed by our Romanian athlete whose name I will remember here. Madalina. Shortly. Wow. Madalina. So Danny's Danny not only is maybe the adrenaline from that fall. Hail has, Mary mode. And and this for Judith will be concerning because she doesn't really know Danny that well. She yeah. uh, she'd have raced her once in the two years ago but it was the, the season that judith had her injury pulled out sierra's now was was when danny suddenly stepped up yeah and so she will know her name but she won't know about how, what her strengths are and yeah. that is concerning as an athlete and look at this gap they've got here now too mm. so we do believe that the top three in the women's race as we lose our picture here for a second switching cameras again beautiful drone footage of the Lakes Basin here in Mammoth Lakes. Top three women here so far today. Danny Moreno, local legend from right here in Mammoth Lakes, followed by the Swiss champion Judith Wider and our Romanian athlete who's Madalena Floria. I think the concern would be the the fact that Danny's leading now and she knows these trails. She's gonna be pacing yeah. to perfection she's not going to be going out too fast because she'd have run this course she knows the distance she knows how she's feeling and so the fact she's leading now is ominous if you're trying to chase her down yeah. because she's running at the pace she knows she can run to the finish yeah and she's been such a consistent runner in sort of the sub ultra distance category over the course of the last several years she's raced on the golden trail world, world series for at least two or three seasons mm. at this point uh, her main focus this year was at OCC, where she was third place back in 2022. Again, mm. she had a disappointing DNF there, but she's been third place at the Mont Blanc Marathon. And one of those athletes who I think is looking for that 
trademark breakout victory, right? Yeah. After many yeah. podium performances, getting a win here on home turf for Danny Moreno would be really, really special. Especially against someone like Judith, mm -hmm. who um, there's almost a, a, a top tier layer where you've got people like Sophia, you've got Nienke, you've got um, Maud, and Judith is in that top tier. And so to be able to, if one of those runners isn't around, um, that's your opportunity as someone to, to 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 smell that victory. But the fact that Judith here is here, and the fact that Judith is is clearly running well after a Donimus and after a Pikes Peak, like it, this would be a major major scalp for Danny. Yeah. And, and and one long overdue. To be fair to her, she's had a, a huge run of bad luck. She she drunk the tap water in Madeira, and and that then meant she was she was out after day two, being sick, having an IV drip. Yeah. When she was, she 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 was sure she was going to peak in Madeira, and just small change, small mistakes like that can be devastating on a season. Yeah. So nope. we see the runners here, they're sort of passing through that campground I mentioned. There's no doubt that Remy at this point is on the lower stretches of the Dragon's Back Ascent, making his way up to the high point of the course. There are, of course, 700 runners in today's race, so front, middle, and back of the pack are all worthy of admiration here on a beautiful California day. But we are off to a great start here as we're just over 30 minutes into today's 26K. And like I said earlier, we are expecting the lead men to be probably just under about two hours. This is the first running of this new course here at the Mammoth Trail Fest 26K. So we're not entirely sure what to expect. It will be a new course record either way with the women's anticipated finishing time being roughly two hours 10, two hours 15. Now, the fact you think it's the, the fact you said it's going to be under two hours remy went into today confident he was going to be around 145 is that right now that either shows that he is on the form of his life or he's made some calculations slightly wrong yeah. and uh, that could be that could be his first mistake. well again we're all, we're all guessing at this point remy could be <laughs> he, he's probably more in tune with his own fitness and i'm sure he's been out on the course scouting it out and Not so his it, prediction though. is probably more accurate he's than seen mine. a lot of it but no i don't think anyone's <laughs> anyone from the europeans has had a chance to see the whole thing because mm. there's there's an element of not wanting to tie yourself out too much yeah. um, but especially one, after pike's peak last weekend and i think that'll be an interesting storyline for us to follow here today, David, is how the athletes who are bouncing back immediately after Pikes Peak Ascent might compare or might compete against the athletes who took last weekend off and more focus their energy here at Mammoth Trail Fest. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one person we haven't spoken about yet who was at Pikes Peak is Eli Hemming. Yep. And he is a runner who emerged last year. He's beaten the Brownlees brothers at triathlon. Yeah. Like he's, he's won a Stud. Gold Cup triathlon. Yeah. This guy is, is a machine. And he's... His 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 broken arrow performance was already a step up on last year, where yeah. he, he emerged as as a great great runner. My big question today is 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 whether he's got the ability to beat any of of Patrick Philemon or Remy right. if they don't blow up, and and that's what I'm not sure about. Yeah, and a sort of similar thing with Eli. What of what I just said about Danny Moreno is that he's been really solid and very consistent podium contender in a lot of these races mm. breaking through finally for the victory at the broken arrow sky race 23k back in june and then following that up with a great second place behind remy bonnet at the mont Blanc marathon and then mm. just last weekend a third place in a really fast two hours seven minute time on the pikes peak ascent eli hemming the best sub ultra distance american athlete in the world right now and like you said comes from that triathlon background a lifelong athlete super fun to see not only him but his wife Tabor here yeah racing internationally with some of the best in the world and he's the, the, the fact that they've not been with the other athletes the the Europeans stick together on tour I think that would be um that would be an advantage because we've had COVID ripping through our camp this week. <laughs> and so people have been testing people have been isolating and and that does put a stress on you yeah. um, a weight on you because everyone's I as soon as I found out COVID was going through the camp I felt ill um, I isolated for a bit because I thought, I think I've got it. Thankfully, I've tested every day and it's yeah. fine. But th it does it does drain you slightly. And so they've um, they've just been away relaxing the whole time. And that should hopefully mean they've been able to um, recuperate better and yeah. have more in their tank today. Yeah. Part of the reality of traveling to race in today's day and age is making sure 
you maintain health. I mean, it's, mm. uh, it's always a challenge for professional athletes, no matter what sport you're in to make a trip and remain healthy, adjust to different mm. cuisine, different altitudes. Obviously it's a change of seasons too. And what a beautiful Vista here from wow. the top of Mammoth Mountain, looking down at the Lakes Basin. And I believe that sort of squiggly line, single track that you see in sort of the lower center left of the screen is the Dragon's Back Ascent. So we are gonna have some really amazing visuals of our race leaders as they make their way up to the high point today. And, um, you know. It, we talked about adapting and, and Eli already. They live um, in Colorado at altitude. Um, Philemon and Patrick, they've been training in Austria. Mm. So there is, there's, there's elevation there. They're at approximately 1400 meters, but it's that I don't think, I've, speaking to their coach, Thomas, that they've had the opportunity to really be at this higher elevation. And so that could be a difference today where Remy and Eli have been over 2000 meters for a, a number of weeks. And it's only really been these last 10 days that Patrick yeah. and Philemon have had that exposure. Um, we saw Patrick fall off significantly by four minutes, or what, three minutes extra in the last three miles. I was just top. gonna say, yeah. Last weekend, yeah, just to your point, to reemphasize it, yeah. Uh, Remy had like a minute and a half with mm. one mile to go at the Pikes Peak Ascent. It ended up being three minutes and 45 seconds, meaning he built up an extra two and a half minute gap mm. in just the last mile or so in last weekend's race. Part of that could be fatigue. A lot of that could be that he was just more altitude acclimatized yeah. going up to 14,000 feet at Pikes and, Peak last And there was weekend. an element as well where Patrick and Philemon have never seen snow before. Mm. They've never run on snow. And coming into the race, one of their teammates had lost a race within a mile um, midway through mm. as soon as they hit snow. So they came into it almost with a, a doomsday story in their head of how hard it was to run on snow. Thankfully, Pikes Peak, it was actually quite a lovely trail underneath and yeah. if anything made the the kiddie litter kind of slightly firmer there was ice um in the shadows around some of the larger rocks but nothing to really concern yourself if you're used to it and so it could be just that patrick was slightly more cautious and as soon as he knew that first wasn't um wasn't up for grabs that he backed off but Philemon at the end, he he made it to halfway a bar camp and crashed out. He said, I never want to race at altitude ever again. <laughs> so um, the fact he's back today. And there's Remy, that. there's Remy on the Dragon's Back climb. And as we watch him come up the hill here, I'm gonna provide an update from back down at the Twin Lakes aid station, roughly mile three and a half in today's race. Oh, wow. We've just had some got, update that the, the top five to 10 women took the wrong turn at the first lake. Oh. Um, we were just getting this in from text. So we're not 100 percent sure what that's done to the placings all the time. I mean, the the fact it's all of them is a good thing in some ways because it means that it's, it's only really going to affect runners through sixth yeah. and 14th for places probably, but still it's going to be incredibly frustrating for you if you're yeah. a runner. And actually um, this is where maturity and having a cool head really comes into yeah. uh, to play because it w that will affect some runners more than others. And we've mentioned already about Madalena and the fact that she's not been able to take on nutrition. The longer the race goes, the, the, the bigger a disadvantage that is yeah but here's remy this is the dragon's back now i believe yep, it is this is the dragon's back and this is really the only technical part of the course here today and going uphill the technicality typically won't slow down runners of remy's caliber that's for sure going back to the updates that we had down at twin lakes i'll just go through the top 10 men here we had of course remy bonet in the front followed by patrick kipiego philemon curiago in third chad hall in fourth Eli Hemming in fifth, Roberto De Lorenze, another Swiss athlete in sixth, Sam Hendry, a great athlete we should talk about in seventh, yeah. Mika Boudon Rousseau in eighth, Daniel Osan, Spaniard in ninth, and Alex Garcia Carrillo, another Spaniard in tenth. And uh, Mikel is one of the athletes you mentioned earlier, is uh, to me as an up and coming runner. Totally. Um, uh, w how well do you think he could do today? Like, what, do you know enough about his strengths and things? Because he's already sat in a very good position here. Yeah, he he I know trains here in Mammoth Lakes quite often, so he should be acclimatized to altitude. Also, one of those athletes who's fresh out of college, he raced at Stanford University in the Bay Area collegiately. He's part of the trail team that Andy Wacker has stood up to try and give younger athletes some more resources and 
structure and support to build careers within this sport. He was third place at the Broken Arrow Sky Race 23K behind Eli Hemming and Chad Hall. So even though he's young and inexperienced, certainly worthy of racing at the front here today. And there's no sign of Philemon or Patrick, at least that we can see here from our drone camera. Going back to the women's update through that three and a half mile checkpoint. Again, it seems they made a navigational error shortly after this. So these results or these standings could mm. have adjusted since then. But we had Danny Moreno out front, followed by Floria, I'm sorry, Madalena Floria from Romania in second, Judith Wider in third, Tabor Hemming in fourth, Sylvia Nordskar, Norwegian in fifth, Anna Gibson in sixth, Giselle Slotboom from Utah in seventh, Sarah Alonso in eighth, Ali Ostrander in ninth, and Malin Osa in tenth. So very strong top tens in both the men's and women's races here. And and Ali Ostrander's up in there. She's been someone who I've been wanting to see run on the Golden Trail for quite some time. She's got the record at Mount Marathon, which is uh, an infamous race. Yep. I mean, it's insanely short up and down yep. uh, 5K. And um, she was at, at Mount, she was at Pike's Peak, didn't really perform in the way I, I was expecting. She came to the Dolomiths and and had I think potentially a COVID issue, got there and couldn't run. So the fact she's up in in top ten at the moment uh, is is great to see because she's someone who I think has the potential to be a very good runner as yeah. well. And here's the string of lead men as they make their way up the dragon's back. Remy Bonet already has a fairly comfortable gap here on the lower half of this critical climb here on today's race course. I think that was Chad Hall that we saw, but I am only guessing yeah, so there. It's difficult to identify. Eli, I think Roberto Di Lorenzo is at the back. I think Eli yeah. Hemming is slightly ahead. So if they maintain those positions, it was Chad Hall followed by Eli Hemming and Roberto De Lorenzo in four through six at the uh, last aid station. And, uh, and Roberto is someone who I don't think Eli is aware of, but I asked Roberto um, when we were in the car, like, who is your who is your rival? Who is the person on the tour? He said Eli Hemming. <laughs> and, um, and that's because they are, um, I think, third and fourth in the series currently. Oh, right. Um, and Roberto De Renzo, he is he's a very good climber. Um, he, he was sixth last week just behind Joe Gray at the Pikes Peak Ascent. So very yeah. strong performance and, and from him. He's been around for a few years, but this year he's really stepped it up. So in, in the Dolomites, he came ninth in the VK World Champs. Um, you know, it's strong performance there. But in, in the Dolomis run, there was a group of four of them, including Stian Angleman, world champion. Mm. And um, Roberto dropped a 2.47 um, minute kilometer, last two kilometers to take second place. So <laughs> this is someone who can climb hard and run extremely fast. So Very cool. The, the, the Looks like only 26 on, years old too. So another one of these just super promising young athletes on the Golden Trail World Series. Yeah, and, and the fact that he, him and Eli are neck and neck, is that could be a beautiful race on the downhill. Yeah. It's funny that you mentioned the standings in the Golden Trail World Series with Roberto and Eli being third and fourth, I believe. Eli, as we did our interview yesterday, mentioned that he and Tabor both had disappointing finishes at Sears mm. and all mm. back in August. And so coming here to Mammoth Lakes gave them an opportunity to drop that as their third result, yeah. hopefully come away with something better uh, here today to enhance their standings in the overall World Series. And, it, and, and that's that's one of the challenges of the Golden Trail is that you it's, it's a, so much easier, as we said before, because of Here's Danny Moreno Danny here. Moreno. So this is likely our women's leader here in the lower stretches of the Dragon's Back Ascent. And I believe this is Rod Farvard with the camera on her and uh, a great friend of Danny Moreno's. Rod Farvard, also a very strong local runner, just coming off a finish at UTMB. He was saying yesterday that it's going to take everything he has to hang with the lead women up the Dragon's Back Ascent here today. But it's great he's doing so with his good friend, Danny Moreno. And, and we've mentioned how... It, the data coming in from uh, the report from the field is that some of the, the top 10 women went the wrong way. You have to assume that Danny Marino would have gone the wrong right, right. way, right? So um, the question is whether the group behind, how many of the group behind her went the wrong way? And, and if Judith and uh, Madalena are still tracking or if they've suddenly had to, to, to catch up a lot of meters. The fact that she, she's running with a friend, she'll be getting data mm. from all of these people. So it's, it's so... It's such an advantage to be on a home race because 
everywhere you go, there'll be people telling you the gaps between you and everyone else. The trouble is, a lot of the time, you're told the wrong time. And so um, people are trying to be as useful as possible, but she'll know which individuals as she passes are the type of people who are the kind of data analysts of her buddies, right. who will be actually giving her a split. Um, and Danny is, a, Danny is known as a good overall runner, but actually, Previously on the Golden Trail, I'd say that she's better on the downhills yep. than the ups. I think she would say the same. One of the things she said yesterday, I've mentioned a couple of times, is that she wanted to go Hail Mary mode today. But she said that she's typically a more conservative racer. We've seen her race her way into the podium at races like OCC and Mont Blanc Marathon using that more conservative style. So one of the things I always really look to and admire in professional athletes like Danny are those who can race in multiple different styles, mm. either hot off mm. the front and aggressively or more conservatively and run through the field late into the day. And, you know, just having that versatility, I think, is something that all professional athletes should aspire to. And it's great to see Danny with the courage to switch things up. Now, I've, I've, uh, I've been assuming that Hail Mary means aggressively. Oh, uh, David, <laughs> this, this, is a, this is an American football term here. So this is a, a metaphor that uh, I'd be happy to explain to you. A I Hail don't know Mary, Mary personally. Yeah. So, um. <laughs> a Hail Mary, of course, is a, is a, a religious, uh, you know, is a religious uh, term as well. But in uh, the American football context, it means just throwing the ball as far as you can down the field and hoping that somebody catches it in the oh, end zone. It's what you do when you have no other options <laughs> left. You know, so it's almost like the three the three throw shot at the end. You're just hoping right. somehow someone catches it. In. Exactly. Ah, it's strange then. It's strange that that's the the term for going out with pure aggression because it yeah. almost it almost suggests that you've got no hope and you're just yeah. um, you. You're just risking everything. Yeah, I'm sure you have similar similar terminology with English football, so maybe. Well, our, our, t our phrases seem to be uh, a little bit more blue, shall we say? A little bit more. <laughs> not the type of phrases I'd, uh, I'd I'd necessarily use for a worldwide uh, broadcast. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> need to watch our language here. This is a family program here, as we see some of our mid-pack runners here cruise along the edge of the lakes here making their way towards the bottom of the climb. And we will try and get cameras on our lead athletes just as soon as we can. Of course, we are working with what we have here, going back to a great drone visual at the top of Mammoth Mountain. But there are spotty uh, sections where we might drop out of coverage like we saw there with Danny. So thanks for bearing with us on that. But how cool is this, Dave? Oh, well, I mean, what a view. And we're, we're hoping to be able to get the front runners back soon. Um, We've spoken about Eli already. Tabor has, she was in a very good position at Pikes Peak and shed a lot of places on mm. that final climb. Um, we've seen this quite often with races. Last year at Sierra's and Al, she was, she started, started aggressively and, and started to shed places again. Um, do we think, she's currently in fourth when they went through the last checkpoint, which is a great position for her. Do we think the fact she's on home turf ish i mean she, she's yep. she's from colorado as opposed to being from california is it more likely she's going to be pacing this run um true to her ability or, or is there a danger that again she may have gone off too fast we know yeah. she's got a track background and yeah i think the world of both Tabor and eli hemming Tabor grew up at 8,000 feet of altitude. Mm. So, you know, it's not just like Remy, for example, who lives in Switzerland, maybe has the opportunity to go up to a couple thousand meters in training and has to use the alternative of like a simulated altitude chamber, for mm. example. Tabor has this inner blood since childhood. She's right? like obelisk being yeah. dropped in the, uh, yeah. in the ghoul. I'm, maybe you don't know asterisks. Maybe my references isn't uh, <laughs> <laughs> dropped in the patient at birth. Um, yeah. So, but anyway, you know, point is that, that Tabor, you know, has all the capabilities, all the talent to compete, you know, for the podium here today, sitting in fourth place, I don't think is representative of being mm. overly aggressive. I think she's very much racing within herself, but like I said, they are motivated to drop that disappointing performance mm. at Sierra Zanal. And I think, you know, this altitude race probably does advantage somebody like Tabor who spends mm -hmm. 12 months a year above 8,000 feet than it does, for example, Madeline Floria, who lives in Romania and mm -hmm. likely doesn't have that opportunity as often. And, and actually, one of the challenges of, of trying to perform at these races, because they're in different continents, and, and next year it's likely that it's going to be in Asia as well, um, part of the balance is how do you 
how do you fund this? How do you take the time to train for this? Because mm -hmm. athletes like Remy have many, many sponsors. He's a full-time pro athlete, similar with Philemon and, and Patrick and, Ju and Judith, a, a mother trying to balance training. And so a lot of the time you can come in and do well in a race, but how do you then transition to being able to afford financially yeah. and in terms of time to actually compete with those pros? and. Um, we, we could be seeing our race later here, but I think this is a great thing to talk about here, David. And I'm glad you brought it up. And I think this is one of the things that the Golden Trail World Series is doing so well is giving athletes opportunities to travel and race mm -hmm. and help with funding. We are seeing a you know huge increase in quote unquote professionalization of the mm -hmm. sport. Obviously that comes with commercialization of the sport, a lot of new brands coming in and investing heavily, giving athletes, younger athletes, more opportunity to race on the world stage races like Sierra's and all races like the Mammoth Trail mm. Fest. It's a really exciting moment in the sport, but you're right. I mean, an athlete like Remy, who is a full-time professional athlete, who has the luxury of training yeah. in an altitude simulation yeah. chamber, not everybody has that opportunity, but as you gain experience, as you gain, you know, positive results in your career, those are the type of opportunities that you get. And it only helps to increase your professionalization mm. and ideally increase your capabilities as an athlete. Yeah, and, and with something like Sierra's and now, if you travel over from the States to it, it's very hard to perform because it's, it's, until you've done that race, it's, it's quite hard to comprehend just how fast it is and, and that road runners can win it. But Golden Trail, if you come top 10 in a race, they'll give you full funding for the next race. And yeah. so you, if, if you come top 10 in the series, you then get full funding for the next series. So all expenses, um, your travel, your accommodation. So if you're someone like Tabor traveling to Sierra Zanau, um, I can't remember if Eli was top 10 in the series last year, I believe he was, so he'd be fully funded, but she'd be having to pay mm -hmm. a lot of her expenses. And so that adds that pressure. You know, this is another good point, and I'm glad you brought up Eli and Tabor because they, in their first running of Sierra Zanau, they fully self-funded yeah. it and they viewed it as an investment in their own career. Yeah. And I think that's such an important mindset for young athletes to have, to give yourself that opportunity, mm -hmm. even if it means you have to break the piggy bank a little bit or borrow a little bit of cash yeah. from mom and dad, give yourself that opportunity. Don't wait for a brand or for a race series to come and present you with an opportunity, make a bet on yourself. And I think that's really paid off with them now signing with Solomon, being full-time professional athletes. Mm -hmm. That was a result of them betting on themselves and investing in their own careers so. yeah and and but with that comes that additional pressure as well if you know you spent three thousand four thousand five thousand dollars on yep. a race you need to perform <laughs> right. well at. and it's quite rare in uh, it, eli would have had this time and time again in his triathlon career but uh, most run, most runners haven't had that make or break scenario where you think I've risked everything on this race financially. If I don't perform well here, it's going to take me another year to build up the cash to be able to then take that risk again. Yeah, absolutely. So, but it is great. And I think this is a really exciting moment in the history of the sport, David. Athletes mm. are really getting a lot mm. of exciting new opportunities. Brands are really helping to invest mm. in their careers. And the sport is really benefiting. I mean, we're seeing this here, Mountain Outpost and their whole team putting on a lot of fantastic live streams here in North America. The Golden Trail World Series has done a great job just sharing the story of what makes trail running so special throughout the summer. And then, of course, like UTMB, that whole week of live broadcast was absolutely spectacular mm. as well those are all things that have been made possible by this increase. is this a runner is that a runner we i don't see? believe so <laughs> they're moving quickly but this seems a little bit early yeah. to be at the peak remy luckily is easy to identify because he has not only a beautiful stride but he's wearing that bright white long sleeve t-shirt so we should be able to id remy coming up Although, the hill. can please salomon can you change his clothes because <laughs> in Pikes Peak, we wanted to have him in bright red so that it went in the snow contrast. Even here, this is a little bit um, beigey. We want to see a bright red Remy just glaring yeah. out of us at yeah. the screen. It would be so much easier for the cameras. Think of us, please, Salomon. Come on, come <laughs> so, on. So going back to what we started our broadcast with here, David, this is a good visual of what wow. they call the, you know, the Sierra Kitty litter here, that like soft, sandy yeah. pumice type uh, material that's underfoot. So that, that will be something that the runners 
we'll need to negotiate here both on this final stretch up to the top of the mountain and then for much of the descent as well. It's non-technical, but it is soft underfoot. So it does sort of sap energy a little bit and you just mm -hmm. have to stay mentally engaged. So just something that makes the, the Mammoth Trail Fest course unique from something like Pikes Peak or Sierras and all. And I, I think a lot of the athletes have gone out here today almost with this as being a half marathon in mind. Mm -hmm. And the fact it's 26K, 4K extra is actually a considerable amount extra when you're really tired yep. and your, your energy's gone. And so, um, as you say, the fact that it is draining as well, this will, this will really start to play on them towards the end. And if you become tired, as we've mentioned already, that's when you start to lose focus. And, and that's when you can start to have falls. And we already saw Danny and Madalena fall where there was no obvious reason for them to do that other yep. than potentially catch. It's often when you see a camera person in the distance or someone you know, you look up and you just lose that concentration. And so that will be the big challenge on this downhill as they grow tired, as uh, as the kitty litter starts to uh, starts to, to, to drain their legs is, is can they keep that focus because without that focus you can't run at the speed you need to yeah. we should see remy here any second if my rudimentary math in my brain is accurate <laughs> i recall yesterday tim tolfson was saying to dan kurtz a great american runner here who's also part of this new next generation of younger athletes coming into the sport and focusing on sub ultra distance racing that the dragon's back ascent is a 36 or 37 minute climb for someone like remy it's probably a little bit shorter than that but anyway we did see the runners go through that first checkpoint 22 minutes into the race so and you know last, we should start to see remy up here soon i checked on Strava, the, the course has changed, as you say. It was right. one fifteen by the peak on Strava for Patrick. So that gives us, well, that, that's got to be wrong for today because yeah. we're coming up to 55 minutes yeah. now. And uh, I would guess probably five minutes until we start to see the runners at the top of the mountain, which means we probably should see them in our view here pretty soon. But again, that's just a guess. And is that Remy there? It looks like a white dot cruising through <laughs> the bottom center of our screen here. If that is, you don't see anybody in his rearview mirror there. So Remy, it looks like with a fairly sizable gap, we said earlier, David, Remy is absolutely the best pure climber in the sport right now. We just saw him break a 30-year-old legendary course record at the Pikes Peak Ascent last weekend, running two hours flat for a half marathon with 7,800 feet of climbing. Remy Bonet here off to an early lead here at the Mammoth Trail Fest with a big cushion. Yeah, and, and actually Remy this year set um, technically the best trail running score of all time. Really? Um, it used to be held by Jonathan Wyatt and, and the way these, these these scores work. In fact, that's got to be Remy there. Yeah, yeah. that's Remy. Yeah. Can we see anyone behind? I mean, this is a monstrously big gap. Look at him just cruising this moonscape here. This is one of the steeper sections of the course. It's difficult it to get a true perspective. Steep, yeah. I mean, it's still like from Remy's perspective, it's it's runnable, obviously. Yeah. It's sort yeah. of like Pike's Peak, but by North American standards, like this is something that would put a hurt on any yeah. mortal trail runner for Remy. It's just another walk in the park here. But what a beautiful moonscape here as Remy Bonet showing no signs of weakness, cruising up to the high point, which he should crest here in the next couple of minutes. And we do have an on-course correspondent up there, Mael Backhausen, who will give us the on-the-ground perspective here in just a little bit, so don't go anywhere. But as predicted, Remy Bonet here in the hot early lead here near the top of the mountain, which he'll reach in just under an hour, it looks like. Wow, I mean, that's an incredible time. Um, yeah. And yeah, the at the moment I can't think of anyone else on earth who's yeah. running at, at Remy, Remy's level. I I wish Killian was back because yeah. I don't know if I, Killian's definitely technically better, but I just don't know if Killian's got his his top end pace and certainly just can't look keep at him on this those kid, heels. man. Yeah, I mean like. Killian obviously has been the best athlete in the world, probably the best athlete in the history of the sport, mm. has had a really long career, but it's so exciting to see this next generation, people like Remy sort of coming mm. for that crown to be sort of the quote unquote next Killian. Obviously he's got his own goals, his own aspirations, but Remy Bonet very much 
at that level at this point, especially in this type of a course, a sub ultra distance race. And and can we applaud Greg for somehow he's made it to the top? I Is don't that know if Greg? he's got a helicopter oh or gosh. some kind of this doesn't make any sense at all, but he's managed it. Um, incredible. And Greg Vallet, of course, responsible for recruiting Remy Bonet to the Solomon team. So they've had a long-term relationship. So Remy's probably happy to see a familiar face here at the top of the mountain again. They are at 11,000 feet of altitude. Remy showing no signs of he's altitude so impacting his pace. And he's just so smooth, like just such a beautiful stride. You know, he's the type of runner who you can identify from long range drone shots because it's like, wow, that is a physical specimen. And and the plan is on, oh, apparently it's, it might be Lenny who's cycling, we've been told. Um, his son, that's what Mikel in the press team has messaged. Um, just to confirm, we will be filming the women's once um, they get to this section, the bike will drop back and we will be filming the women. So there'll be a point when we basically lose the men's race pretty much in the in the woods. And so yeah. there will be equal coverage. It's just going to take slightly longer to come yeah. in. But the, the big change I think we're seeing in the sport these days, um, you know, Killian is, has been insane in the fact that he can have VK records all the way up to UTMB records. Yeah. And whereas now it does seem that to be successful, you need to focus on one of these races. And we, we saw with Stian coming into Dolomis run, you know, he potentially he was tired, but I, I don't, I think the era of being able to run ultras and sub ultras and win is, is dead. It's such a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. We are sort of in an era of specialization, right? And mm. it's getting much more granular, right? If mm. we think of someone like Remy Bonet as being a short course specialist and then something, somebody like Courtney DeWalter being a long course specialist. Now we're seeing people like Jonathan Albin, for example, mm. as being more of like um, sort of a mid-distance specialist, mm. more of like an 80K to 100K. Obviously, like Stian Angermund yeah. is all more like marathon to 50K specialist. So really, really interesting moment in the sport. And that goes back to something I said earlier, you know, with Danny and being confident to race in different styles. I always love seeing athletes who can be competitive at various distances in mm. this era of specialization. So Remy is now officially over the high point of Mammoth Mountain, and it is a long, fast downhill from here to the finish line. Uh, so he likely will be under two hours uh, from here to the finish line. But, you know, obviously it is far from over at this point. There are a few sort of annoying bumps along the way. There is a, still a little bit of climbing to go, but Remy Bonet in solid control of today's race. And actually Philemon is, you know, he's incredibly fast on the downhill. And so we're not quite sure how it compares to Remy, but it, it, this race isn't necessarily done and dusted yet. Yeah. Um, Philemon, if, if anyone, has the speed to be able to come back and actually challenge Remy. Um, and in a race like this, you can see there are rocks, not many, but just a slightly a slight fall, a slightly turned angle can really affect your confidence. And um, Remy will probably be getting split, but at some point towards the end, he won't necessarily know the lead he's got. And yep. so there is a danger that he settles back and relaxes and, and gives Philemon that chance to, to race through and to catch him. Um, yeah. Remy clearly playing to his strengths, right? Knowing that he's the best climber in the field, mm. doing everything he can to have a huge gap by the time he gets to the top of the mountain so that if there is anybody in the field who might have an advantage on the descent over him, that he's got at least a comfortable advantage uh, that they would have to make up here in the back half of today's course. But Remy certainly not looking like he has weakness on the descent here today. You'll notice that this is a wide track, non-technical. They will eventually funnel on to mm. a single track that has a lot of that soft Sierra pumice that we've mentioned a couple of times now, but it is non-technical all the way to the finish line. And and he's really learned how to to use his different skills um, properly. At, at first, he'd, he'd go all out on the uphill because he knew it's his strength. But even this week, so on Monday, we went for this this long run in, um, in Yosemite. Mm -hmm. And there was a a, a a 20k run and Remy all the runners went with Remy and Remy led them up the hill at just the, the pace that he knew was comfortable for him and for some reason five other athletes thought it was a good idea to run with Remy and chat <laughs> with Remy up this hill he went into it I'm sure knowing that he was going to test them but also tire them significantly though Patrick and Philemon 
both thought we're going to do the shorter run and when we were all around taking our lovely Instagram photos they just sat under a tree in the shade <laughs> and so they have been preserving their energy more than the other European uh, athletes yeah as we cut back to the top of the screen here that is a funny story I'd love to hear the European reaction to the great Yosemite Valley here which is of course oh, an wow. iconic wow. part of North America and here we have Mile Backhausen at the top of the hill here we're going to try and get a clean connection with him so he can give us the boots on the ground reaction we'll wait to hear from our production team as to when we can cut to Mael up there he's looking bundled up and cold <laughs> let's see here and while we wait for the noise just yeah. so you know that the the summit is just over seven and a half miles in so there's about 10 miles left of yeah. running so we're over halfway in terms of the time it's going to take them um, approximately, but there's still a significant chunk of this race left. Yeah. So yeah, should be right around that two hour mark. I mean, averaging a six minute pace with 10 miles to go down to the finish line is not unrealistic for mm -hmm. athletes of Remy and Patrick and Philemon and Eli's, um, stature as we wait also to get updates from the women's race and see if Danny Moreno is still sustaining her lead. And now it's, it's the dragon's back section where Madalena, Judith potentially could claw back Danny. Right. Um, and that will be, that, that's really going to tell us the, the story of this race. Danny versus Judith on the downhill as well. Cause there we go. Judith can really flow. So if this is second and third place here, it's difficult to tell, but this is probably <laughs> Patrick and Philemon here. But if this is indeed second and third place, Remy has a huge gap. I'm going to leave our studio. I'm going to go and stare at the screen yeah. as close as I can. <laughs> so apologies if I disappear from your vision. I'll, I'll hold down the fort uh, here. To, just to have a look to see who it is. So if that is indeed our second and third place runners, that means that Remy probably has a two or three minute gap here from the true high point at the top of Mammoth Mountain, 11,000 feet of vertical here on a beautiful blue sky day. And two or three minutes at this point in the race, it's only seven miles into today's course. That is a sizable advantage for Remy Bonnet. I've been looking for flecks of yellow on the screen, even with my face right up close. I can't tell, I'm afraid. Um, but unless something dramatic has happened, we would expect that to be Patrick Gosh, man, and I mean, Gino. This is so amazing for me, you know, as somebody who's a big fan of the sport to finally be able to really watch Remy race on trails that I'm familiar with. <laughs> you know, like I said, I've done training camps here in Mammoth as well. And, you know, he's racing against the best athletes in the world and he's got a huge gap. Like if this is our fourth place runner here with no sign of fifth place behind him, I mean, Remy is absolutely yeah. dominating here today. Obviously, there is still race to go. We know Remy's the best uphiller in the world. He is probably playing to his strengths in that respect. He could, you know, fade a little bit here mm. in the back half. But, man, like, he's absolutely dominant right now. And, and there has been an assumption for, for quite a few years that there will, as the the sport grows and the prize money increases, the motivation to, to bring across African runners to, mm. to win increases as well. And there has been this assumption that... Um, that you, you can take very fast runners and they can just do well in races like yeah. this. And actually, we've, we're, seeing, we're seeing success from um, you know, people like Petra Mamu from Eritrea mm -hmm. and, uh, and Robert and Patrick, but it's, there's so many elements to performances like today that people don't understand. And yeah. you can take a fast runner, but if you're not getting your nutrition right, if you don't know altitude, if you haven't got your race tactics, or know how to pace and even small things you can see that Remy's wearing a long sleeve top today that I've not seen him wear before um, and that was a, a conscious choice because of how cold it was this morning and and so this looks like so if that is fourth place it's difficult it's to tell a black but top isn't it we did have Chad Hall followed by Eli Hemming and then Roberto De Lorenzo in a colored top behind yeah. so, so well I, we, I've got the um the live tracking up here. So I'll continue to hit refresh and see if we can't get accurate splits from the top of the mountain here. But yeah, it, it is an interesting point, right? Like we are starting to see a lot of this African influence in trail running in Sierra Zanal just mm. 
a couple of months ago on the podiums of both the men's and women's races. Five out of the six places were African athletes, yeah. the only exception being Sophia Lockley winning yeah. the women's race in America. And so, yes, another interesting dynamic to, to follow over the coming years as trail running continues to evolve into this hyper-professional international mm. sport. That looked like Roberto there. We had a very quick glimpse. I saw a, <laughs> a white Brooks They're top. They're teasing us. Yeah. <laughs> And Roberto is, uh, he's not really known as a, a, a powerful descender, but um, he is extremely fast as he showed it at the Dolomiths. And so him against Chad, against Eli, those are, ooh, this looks like, um, I, don't I assume an American runner with a mustache. Yeah. Um, there aren't many. So to our viewing audience, if you can identify these runners, obviously we are open to your knowledge as well here make sure you jump in the chat and share that information with us oh this might be noah williams i see a ah. little bit of a man bun okay noah williams 10th place at the yeah. pikes peak ascent last week and another one of these young up-and-coming american talents he lives in leadville colorado so going back to the altitude conversation mm. he lives at ten thousand feet so here at the top of mammoth mountain he's not much higher than where he sleeps every night so noah williams if he is indeed here sitting in the top five he is having the race of his life yeah and and to be able to put and, and that's that's partly why these two races have been chosen yeah. to allow a tour to happen where intentionally the golden trail has been choosing races that are less than marathon these, these half marathon distances does give athletes the opportunity to um to race back to back particularly pikes peak just being a climb it's the downhills that really punish your quads whereas on the uphill because you're um you're the gravitational pull on each um I've completely ruined the explanation of that, <laughs> but um, because the impact of each step is less, you can see runners, you, you'll see it actually with, with VKs. Traditionally in the past, people would do a VK a day or two before they'd raced, knowing that their legs would be okay and they could test their lungs and, and actually get a, a good pace in. We've been, um, we've been given an update from the, uh, the number two runners blob, three runner blob, four runner blob. <laughs> Five mustachios. So uh, thank you <laughs> thank to you for that, Elliot Elliot, Bacon. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure five is mustachio, actually. I think mustachio might be a little bit further back. Yeah, it, it's, it's tough to know now. So we'll do our best to get accurate splits here from the top of the mountain. But, you know, this is obviously a very competitive early race here at the Mammoth Trail Fest with Remy Bonet, hot off the front, well in control, but with a lot of athletes competing for those podium top five, top 10 positions, you know, at these Golden Trail World Series events now, a top 10 result is absolutely mm. world-class. I don't think there's any question about it that the Golden Trail World Series is the most densely competitive series on the trail running uh, international calendar at this point. And I think, you know, we can all be honest with ourselves. It's getting a little confusing with all these different <laughs> circuits and series, but I really admire what the Golden Trail World Series has done, not only in supporting athletes, like we said earlier, but assembling some of the best in the world all over the globe and always making an effort to invest in the media coverage like they're doing this here looks today. like danny this That's this in danny fact indeed. this is danny yep. the fact that we're seeing her must mean she's leading but that looks um, like judith's kit potentially up there on that next switchback oh, doesn't in the, it in the slightly pinky red yep oh wow um that could be the case i'd expect judith to be this kind of incline to be stomping hands on knees um she was certainly doing that in um in pike's peak for the majority of the the steeper climbs and in fact danny's now doing that as well you can see so this is this must be very steep this last kind of little section to the lip yep. at the top of the of the dragon's back um danny against judith on the downhill will be interesting because yeah. i don't think either of them know each other well um the fact that that i, I, I judith for me is quicker but the fact that danny knows the terrain yeah. is advantage to her as well so it is it, fairly even in that respect the fact they're so close as well um yeah. and danny didn't run last week right which is another interesting storyline that we can follow all day judith of course running a very proud second place at the pikes peak ascent only six days ago so how might that impact her freshness here today only time will tell, but what a beautiful start to the day it has been. And what I, I think that's Judith behind um, in or in the blue, or is that Manina? Yeah. 
Um, we're just getting confirmations from the from the field. Um, but yeah, this is... Either way, though, going back to what, another thing that we mentioned earlier, David, mm. it doesn't seem like that wrong turn that was reported via your mm. WhatsApp group chat has impacted at least the front of the field if we are indeed seeing both Danny and Judith within I, striking distance of one another here and at actually, the top of the climb. If people get lost, you want everyone to get lost. No, yeah. that's the, we, we saw um, in 2019 when Judith won the Golden Trail Series, Maud got lost in the final in Nepal, um, and it actually changed the result of like, the entire series. Um, so this is where we've talked about focus and concentration. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time when you're suffering or in pain or if you're thinking about the person near you, that is when you make these small mistakes and, and they do cost races and they do cost yeah. race positions. And it is part of the game, we should mm. say, you know, staying on course is always the challenge in trail races. And I think especially for these professional mm. athletes who, you know, may be off the front or without a lot of bodies in their eyesight and who are moving at red line intensity, mm you know, staying on course is a critical, but sometimes challenging, um, you know, necessity in itself, you know, during competition, more so than you see in like a big city half marathon, for example. And so. they, they do all have GPX files available to them. You know, it is the same course for everyone. Yep. And so, um, and it is your responsibility to yeah. know the way, right? The race directors do their best to mark yeah. the correct path. And, you know, somebody like Tim Tollison, I know puts a lot of care into that. Mm. Somebody who races professionally, Here's Marlin. Here's, <laughs> yeah. here's, here's Marlin and Sylvia locked in the battle. So this is the battle awesome. for third and fourth in the series overall. Awesome. Marlin in the red needs to finish ahead of Sylvia in the top 10. To Tell us about Sylvia, third. Norwegian athlete here. We've talked about Malin and Sarah who are our Spanish athletes. Tell us about Sylvia. Well, Sylvia, she's still fairly unknown on the circuit. She came to the, the national series finals last year. And um, the way those series work is that there's a team competition, but there are also segments like the Tour de France where you can be the, the sprint queen, the uphill queen, the downhill queen. She was competing for that sprint section. And um, she's, she's an accountant by trade, but decide, she got married in, um, in December and decided to dedicate this year to seeing what would happen if she became a full-time athlete. Wow. So she's had some really good early performances. Um, she was top five in um, Zagama. She was, I think, top five in Mont Blanc. And, um, but the, the, throughout the series, you'll see the competition does change. And suddenly the, the, the faces changed. And we saw a lot of the runners early in the season who were doing well, people like Kelton Fielder, uh, Daniela Omus, um, partly Daniela Omus and, and Therese LeBeuf both have families so they can't travel here as easily mm -hmm. but we did see quite a few people over racing and their performances were dropping because if you're doing something like Zagama or Mont Blanc full marathon distances it's going to take you 10 days two weeks before you can really train properly if you're then having to taper within two weeks you do start to lose speed and form so Sylvia's come into this in a, in a great position overall mm -hmm. in the series in third um, but hasn't been able to quite deliver the performances that she did at the beginning of the season mm. partly because of the change in the courses partly because of greater competition um, but she this is a race that suits her yeah. um, you can see how tall she is and these downhills are made for people with, with mm. very long legs. So the fact that her and Marlin are together um, suggests that Sylvia, to me, probably is going to win this battle. But then this is why we love Golden Child, because it's yeah. also going to come down to who wants it more. So this looks like Danny on our screen here, coming through the top in the lead of the women's race. So again, these are unconfirmed, but th that is our speculation. And going back to what you said, I mean, I think it's interesting just what's in the water and mm. Norwegian endurance endurance athletes at this yeah. point, not only Sylvia, but obviously we've seen Stian Angermoon win two world championships recently. In addition to his OCC, we've seen, you know, the likes of Christian Blumenfeld and Gustav Eden yeah. winning Olympic medals and Ironman world championships and 70.3 world championships. Jakob Ingebrigtsen on the track, Karsten Warholm on the track. Yeah. Norway is truly turning into like the best endurance country in the world across all these various disciplines and how great is this we've got boots on the ground chase cam runners here with malin osa and sylvia Northstar. and you can see the the climbing has stopped and sylvia is starting to pull away now 
and so she she knows that this is her time um they know that this is their battle for top three now, if you don't know how the scoring works in the golden trail series there are six races before the final your top three results from those races count towards the final the final then has a prologue of a 5k and then there'll be um the final race itself where um the final is worth double points so these athletes know that if they've had some bad results, we spoke about Eli and Tabor, those are going to be really dragging them down over their overall scores. So you can just turn up like Sophia, run three times, win, uh, win twice, come second once, and leave yourself in a great position and not have to do the whole season. But actually, a lot of these athletes will be picking up prize money as they go, but also wanting to block anyone else to be able to get into those high scoring positions and but but today a lot of them will be running not to get their third scoring race but actually to knock out the one shocker right. they've had already this yep. season but you can see the gap that's already happening as as they can flow through it and oh here we go so here's remy on the descent here like this, we said this looks like francesco Pippi from the running style it's oh yes be. all right francesco foregoing a bib instead going and getting the content love the commitment to the content game here remy bonet still in the lead here of the men's race still looking super smooth super strong here descending in altitude which also makes things feel easier using gravity incredible and remy bonet fully in control of today's race yeah and um wow and in fact we just had clarification sophia ran four times and won three so that's her Ooh. scoring across those four races <laughs> is 600 like points because it's 200 K. points for a win so uh, cool. her second place gets dropped down hey but we've got I, the I great the sally mccray here four. on the ground here Dude, so sally let's throw yeah. it to you tell us what you're seeing Oh, what's up, you guys? Coming at you from the McCoy aid station. We are mile 11. These guys have just descended 1,500 feet. They've got like 8K left to go. Remy looks like he's out for like the, the local 5K, and he's like in the elite field looking to, to, to win. And I mean, his pace just now was incredible. Oh, my gosh. Number two, here comes our second. Our second runner's coming in. Looking so strong. Heck, yeah, let's go. That's Patrick. Right on his yeah, heels. That's Patrick. Oh my gosh. This race is fire. <laughs> this is fire, man. Sally, Dude, do we know do we know the time difference between the two of them approximately? L l less than a minute. I mean, wow. that was, what are, what are we looking at? Like maybe like 35, 45 seconds right there? Dude, I so love his yellow So we've got a race too. here, folks. Oh, we have a race. This is what I'm always interested to see is if these guys are going to stop in the aid station. And and I'll tell you what, Remy did not. He just went straight through, blasted through that aid station. He didn't grab anything. I mean, for a race that's short and you know that you're descending, mm -hmm. um, hopefully you got a gel or something in there. You're going to need maybe like 100 calories. You don't want those hamstrings seizing up. But Remy, I mean, he was – plowing right through so he didn't stop but second place um was that patrick that you guys said yeah, that was patrick, think it was patrick yep. yeah so patrick it looked like he just grabbed something really quick um which you know that that could that could serve him really well for this descent getting in that extra fuel but uh, as far as pace goes i mean those guys were matching each other's pace so it's really about who's the better downhill runner um and then number three we got number three coming in right now this might be Patrick's uh, teammate. Looks this like they're wearing Philemon. the same yeah. kit. Philemon. Looking good, Philemon. Let's go. <laughs> Heck yeah. Dude, how amazing oh, is how this? Great is you this? look amazing. Let's go. And and how Aid would you right ahead? Um how, how Sally, how, oh if you gosh. did you get a chance yeah. to look in their eyes, would you would you say any of them were looking more composed yeah. or more aggressive of the three of them? Oh man, the three of them are so focused. I mean, they're like lions. They're 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 totally preying on each other. I'm gonna see if oh, this is number four. Number That's four. Chad Hall. Right That's Chad Hall. That's Chad Hall. Yeah. Chad Hall is right Chad behind is super him. Close. Yeah. I mean, he he Chad is dialed in and he is focusing on the next runner right ahead. I'll and tell he's you what. All three races to, this week. Number three didn't stop at the aid station. It doesn't look like Chad is stopping at that aid station either. These guys are focusing on that yeah. finish line. That I mean, I'll like I mean, Henry. I'm used to the longer uh distances and when you are five miles from the finish line you you you're smelling that finish line right like it's just <laughs> pulling you in so yeah these guys aren't looking to uh oh 
Chag had to be redirected right there. He took a really hard right back onto the course. He was veering to the left there just for a couple steps. But um, those top four are right on top of each other. And it looks like number five is coming in. I'm thinking, uh, here we go. Number five and number six, number seven. You guys, we have a whole group. Yes. We have a whole group of runners coming in. This is going to be such an exciting finish. Oh, my gosh. We You're suspect, right on each other's heels. We suspect that will be this Eli, is... probably Roberto De Lorenzo, and potentially, ooh, I'm trying to think who the third is. Maybe go, Sam guys. Henry. Heck yeah. We had, we had Sam Henry. It looks like. At least on that you guys are right cam. there. The next pack of runners is yeah, right there. there. You guys keep Pretty pushing. Sure that's Sam you Henry look great. You look so strong. Yeah. We got eight yeah, yeah, yeah. K left. So, Let's go. And Let's all go. of these three can run significantly uh, fast downhills. So all three of these will now be looking to change. Got another gear. one coming in. All right, another one coming in. Is this number? What number would this be? Is this nine? Four. We're up. Um, this is number seven. He's moving so well. Okay, number seven. Uh, sorry, number uh, one, two, three. Number eight. No, position number eight. Okay. Okay, position number eight, and he's looking strong. You look so good. You Come got an eight station two. right ahead. Keep on going. Hey, Sam Henry's at the back. Someone from that's the Adidas Dan That was oh, Danny Sands that's, who's that's, just gone that's, past. That's Mika with the black hat. Who's the other Brooks? Yeah, and he he was breathing a little hard, but you know what? Okay, the look cool. in his eyes is like I'm I'm doing work right now. You know, I'm always I'm always hesitant to say whether or not oh this runner you know they don't look so great. Looks like they're struggling because that's what work looks like when you're giving it all. <laughs> when you're putting all out there, it's supposed to look like that. This isn't a fashion show. It's okay if you're not smiling when you come into the aid station. You know, when you're giving everything you've got and you're really digging deep, and these guys are looking at five miles from the aid station, they know it's a and they are chasing people in front of them it's gonna get sloppy and i'm seeing a lot of snot and a lot of slobber all over their faces yeah these guys are giving 110 percent, and that's what you want to feel when you cross that finish line you want to know you gave everything and i'll tell you what we got someone else coming in right here with a little man bun let's go this is number this is going to be our number man nine bun, guy believe. man bun was it was yeah. Noah williams no williams yes no williams Ch chad hall so also strong. came let's through go. they were the man bun let's brothers go. Noah's looking strong. Wait, He's got that's good, not Noah, though. good, That looks like Daniel Pattis. Um, I apologize. It's my Italy. fault. That's Daniel. He's a Brooks runner as well. From Italy. Um, yeah. Oh, he looks great, and he even He's got lovely hair as well, though, Sally. I can understand <laughs> yeah, the confusion. Yeah, he's got lovely hair. He's got lovely hair as well. And uh, here we go. We got our number ten coming in. Is that right? Number ten. Am I saying that correctly? You guys so, are so excited. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost track of the oh numbers God. now. We're too Let's excited go. by your response to it all. It's fantastic. <laughs> I think notably absent so far is Eli Hemming. So Let's go! Unless Eli was in that group of three, potentially. I don't think he was. Right I think that was Dude, Mika, De Lorenzi, so and Sam Henry. Runners are right wow. there, man. Let's go! So we're, That's we're, Eli oh, right no, there. That's it. Eli. You got it. You got it, wow. Eli. So, Come on. Push Eli. So Eli's, there's, Eli's clearly having some kind of issue today that he wasn't... Uh, we'd expect Eli gave me a word right there, guys. Eli just told me he met, he might poop himself. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, no. He That's said it with a smile. He said it with a smile. Let's go. He said it with a smile. And you know what? You know, he might be able to hold on. We'll see. Let's see if he stops in the aid station. Let's see if he's going to stop and maybe go. For... And the fact oh, that Remy no. didn't take. So Remy struggles with nutrition on the downhill. Mm. He said that just when it. Wow, look at that Whoa. jump. Oh, my word. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, that was raw regression there. Hopefully raw that, athleticism that's there. That's incredible to see. And um, here's Greg Volet on the uh, e bike. Mountain, <laughs> mountain bike, bike couldn't follow. So, yeah. we, Sally, would you be expected to see the first yeah. ladies coming through in about five, six minutes, we're hoping? Oh, fingers man. crossed and the yeah. ladies are freaking crushing yeah, let me so just tell you guys right now let me I, I need to let you guys know it is freezing <laughs> we're at 9600 feet up here there is wind i mean wind gusts are up to like 20 miles an hour what these athletes have have been through just to get to the top of the mountain for those of you everyone in the live chat what is up i know you're warm you're sitting there with your cup of coffee or in your office right now but go ahead and stick your head in the freezer right now add a fan to that that is what these athletes are enduring and yeah. so 
thin air, icy cold winds, push into the top in altitude, and to be moving at this pace. You guys, what we're able to witness right now, I mean, this whole year in sports has been incredible, mm. what everyone has been doing. But what we just saw, super fast, super strong, and, and in this altitude, in this wind, it's just amazing. Yeah. This is hey, such an exciting race. Hey, hey Sally, so what, at the top yeah. of the mountain, we were unable to get accurate yeah. splits from the women's race. So if you have your watch on, you do your best to get yes. us a good accurate split because okay, it was it looked like a really the exciting race we think danny moreno is in the lead so she should be there fairly soon just a few minutes and also okay, if you I'm, can I'm, describe I'm, the pace of each individual with a different animal so we can get a sense yeah. of <laughs> what kind yeah. of how fluid they're looking yeah yeah man look at uh, sally you can't see this but on our big screen here we see patrick kipiego who we think is running in second place this looks like philemon to me oh this This is is, yeah absolutely so philemon and patrick both representing kenya here at the mammoth trail fest and man he looks so smooth so strong on this descent so you know remy and patrick if this is indeed philemon in third place are probably i mean they they need to be knowing that man people are moving fast and we said before patrick's we, we said I was just going to say, all three of them look so strong when they came yeah. through here. I mean, their paces were were pretty much matching each other. So Ph- Philemon is the is is known of the two of Patrick and, Phil- and Philemon to be faster. At Sierra's now, Patrick had said um, two minutes was the gap he'd need at least to be able to hold off Philemon on the downhill. This is a far longer downhill than uh, Sierra's now. It's less steep, um, and so. The fact that Philemon is within two, three minutes of Remy. We've got a race. We do have a race. And it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Philemon's catching Patrick within the next 30 minutes or so. Um, which Guys, which... we have some more runners coming in. Oh, more perfect. runners coming into the McCoy Aid Station. Again, for those of you just tuning in, this is mile 11. We're 9,600 9, feet in the sky. And once they hit us, they got about 8K left, five miles to the finish line. So they are flying through this aid station. So far, we've only seen one, maybe two athletes grab anything from the aid station. People are just going down this hill, giving everything they got. And we got a great view. You know, at this point, they've come straight down and now they're curving around this single track. We got three guys coming in a group right now. Let's go ahead and check out and see who that is. I'm We're seeing, also seeing a, Chad uh, Hall in fourth here. He is looking he incredibly is flying. strong. Gosh, these guys are so impressive. And how great is this that we've got a camera on an athlete of the caliber of Chad Hall showing everybody in the world looking just strong, how fun, guys. exciting, and athletic trail Let's running work. can be. Chad Hall looking Let's so go. smooth and here. And this is a big right step up from last week. It. You know, it's it's not, performance at, at the right Pikes Peak. He's showing nice he's clearly spot. a downhill That's runner. Darren Thomas there at the front of this little pack. That looked like Noah Williams at the back of that pack. Can't ID the one in the middle there, but that's another strong group there of three. Got it. We got one more coming in right here. So just to confirm, at the moment, we believe in the men's. We've got Remy at the front, Patrick in second, Philemon in third, and Chad Hall in fourth. Of those four, three of them are very good downhill runners. So Mm -hmm. for me, at the moment, there's a chance Chad could be podiuming. Um, nice Patrick is going to have to fight for his ahead. life to, to keep him and Philemon back. I think Remy's going to have to fight for his life. I mean, this is clearly not over at this point at mm. the top of the mountain. It seemed like Remy had almost an insurmountable gap. That is certainly not the case here anymore. Um, oh, it wow. looks like Chad has overtaken wow. our third place runner who we believe to be Philemon. So again, Chad Hall, we said, I think he ran about a 62 minute half marathon early in the spring of this year and, you know, has been relatively quiet in terms of his racing season. He did run the Broken Arrow 23K where he was second behind Eli Hemming. He ended up not going over to the Mont Blanc Marathon. He did run a solid uh, ninth place at the Pikes Peak Ascent last weekend. So he could be that perfect mix of fitness and freshness here without yeah. that overload of, um, you know, racing in his legs this season. And the fact that it's not just that he's overtaken an athlete, he's overtaken the athlete we expected to be the strongest descender pulling in Remy. Oh, yeah. So the fact that Chad has already overtaken him super quickly yeah. is, is very, <laughs> (laughs) very impressive and so Chad now he's looking like the man who Remy needs to be nervous of 
He was one of the breakout stars of, I think, the 2022 so season. And really, he was discovered here at the Mammoth Trail Fest for the most part. I believe he won both the 50K and the Dragon's Back Ascent last year here at the Mammoth Trail Fest. And we should repeat again. He is forecasted to run all three events here this weekend. So the 50K tomorrow and the Dragon's Back Ascent on Sunday. So Chad Hall getting off to a very hot start to a long racing weekend here. And what an impressive athlete he is. Again, the younger brother of iconic American distance runner, Ryan Hall, but not to be overshadowed by his brother, Chad Hall, an amazing athlete in his own right. He had been training down in Big Bear for the last few weeks, so he said he was feeling good about the altitude, feeling relatively fresh and excited to race this weekend. It's great to see him here in podium contention. And, and the fact that the cyclist, Greg, and, and Lenny, the, the cameraman, it's drone footage from now on, which means Remy will not be getting information on the course of what's happening behind him. Yep. And um, that might be good for him to not know they're coming and to, to make him too nervous. But actually, he, he needs a fire. He needs a rocket up his bum right now yep. because they are coming for him. And whether he knows that or not is, is, is the big question. We, we see another overtake here um, as they come into the, to the woods. Yep. Just trying to figure out who this are from their running style. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's difficult to ID here, but these athletes are going to be competing for the top 10 here today. I think yeah. that's Noah Williams with the blue hat off the front. Can't see the man bun, but I think that might be Noah Williams from Leadville, Colorado. And is, is, Noah, is Noah known for his, his uphills or downhills? Yes, uphills, yeah. He was, he was 10th at the Pike Peak Ascent just behind Chad Hall last weekend. He lives again in, in Leadville. He's a ski patroller, just one of those guys who's an outdoor athlete, a multi-sport athlete to his core, and, you know, focused a lot right now on the shorter distance races, racing on the Golden Trail World Series, has aspirations to go longer later in his career, he said during our elite athlete interviews yesterday. But it seems like one of those, you know, really, you know, motivated, eager athletes who just loves being part of the sport. Mm. So. And, I, and I think one of the challenges is if you go for these longer races, um, as we've seen with Danny this year, you're putting all of your eggs in one basket yep. and it can be super hard to perform on a one day in a different country or, or, or where there's so many unpredictable things, which is partly why the series is so good for athletes is you get that opportunity, six races in which you can perform three times. Yep. And so it, it does mean that you, as an athlete, you're not taking as many risks with um, trying to attract sponsorship or trying to make your name because you know that you can, for example, Danny Marini, Marino, if she wins here today, this, this is a huge story for her yep. um, and w could really unlock a, a, a future different direction for her as, as people suddenly are aware that, that, that she has the ability yeah. to perform nice at this work. level. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. Right I mean, winning any stage of the Golden Trail World Series is almost I like winning a stage of the Tour de France at this point. Yeah. It's like yeah. a career highlight. So for somebody like Danny Moreno, that has eluded her. So if she was able to take home the victory here on home turf, that would be something to put at the very top of her trophy shelf. And we do expect to see the women's lead pack coming through this McCoy 8 station 11 miles into today's race in only a couple of minutes. So if you're thinking about turning off the broadcast, make sure you don't do so because Sally McRae is about to go nuts <laughs> as soon as the lead women come through this aid station. I mean, I'm happy just watching Sally McRae for the next yeah, half me too. hour, to be yeah, fair. I'm, turn She's, my mic uh, off and just let her cook, you know what I mean? <laughs> she, I, I, there's going to be some runners who uh, the the, the disconnect between their energy and hers is going to be very yeah. apparent because there's, there's going to be some tired legs out there. Yeah. You know, one thing we should mention here while we have a, a little bit of breathing space, Rod Farvard yesterday, again, a local athlete who's helping us on the broadcast here today, carrying cameras. He was analyzing the course and he said going around this pond on the course, he thought was a crux moment of the race because there are some false flats. It is like one of the final climbs albeit short and runnable on today's course so one of those things where if you are suffering if you have miscalculated your energy expenditure a place where you might lose time to the competition so just for our viewing audience here this according to rod farvard is a very important spot on the course and actually we've been saying how fast the downhill is but if you're tired it's not fast. It works against you. The yep. fact that it's so soft, the soft allows you to flow through it. But if you haven't got the, the speed 
to carry it through, actually it starts to drain you and it becomes very, very sappy. And so you will see big gaps between people that haven't blown up and those who have um, throughout the whole, and it, it's, it, it's still a long way to go. Like 10 miles of downhill is, is a very long way to be running downhill. Yep. Um, oh yeah, we definitely have some women coming in, okay. you guys. Definitely have some women. Uh, I see ponytails bouncing around. I can't tell just yet because they're still about 150 meters out. Judith. But here Judith, they come. She'll have oh, yeah, Red first right here. Headbands. We, we have. Oh, and we just. Being followed it. by a banana. Let's go. Being followed go. by a banana. Wow. The banana, I believe, is one of the, the local podcasts. That looks like a white top. That looks like Danny Moreno, yeah, we got, potentially. We have white yeah, arm sleeves. Like Danny Moreno. And is is that no, a white female arm banana? Is, is that is this banana competing? Head. No, that is not. Danny had black arm no. sleeves. Danny's got a very different running style to that, I think. Let's go! Um, you look so good. You got your aid station but, right ahead if you need it. Otherwise, stay to the right to stay on the trail. Looking very strong. That and that's then we a, number two. Number is two. That is, right is that Madalena? Wow! This is okay, an incredible you guys, performance we're, for we're her. We're looking at about. Is. We're looking at about a less than 10 second difference right here. You look amazing. Okay, Keep this is up. Judith here in second. This is number two. And then number three, right wow. behind her. So we did think this hill was going to be the difference with Danny Heck and yeah, Judith. yeah, let's go. The fact that Madeline has picked it up Looking there, so good. You um, got your eight clearly shows she's, ahead, she's got the form she had in the first half the trail. Now. Uh, And you, you mentioned amazing. she's a 111 half marathon runner. So yeah. these faster trails probably suiting her capabilities maybe more so. Oh, she... Was it, is that a little the, bit of a navigation a, problem here. Uh, okay, it didn't go through the the checkpoint, but uh, doesn't hasn't cost too much time. Yeah. Thankfully, the yes. Uh, I mean, one, on one, one, yeah. one, two, and three are pretty much coming in together. They are like five, six seconds apart from each other, and they all look great. They're, the looks on their faces, they are dialed in. They're looking at who's right ahead of them. It's be really interesting to see what they do the next five miles. None of them stop to grab anything at the aid station. I almost feel like the aid station is situated just a little bit too far from the course, so it's mm. kind of like, do I go over mm. and grab something, or do I stay on these pink flags and if you're racing a lot of times you're touching and making sure okay i got a gel i'm not going over to that aid station we're gonna we're gonna keep on going and sally did you get a sense did you get a sense that any of those runners were kind of sat in behind the others were some of them being pulled or no i mean they had a a good uh five to eight seconds apart Mm. You know, mm. from each other, but very dialed in on on just looking straight ahead. So amazing! Um, We're separated yeah, by five to amazing. eight seconds for the top three. Five in the to women's eight seconds race. for the top three women. We got a couple guys coming in right now, but I'll tell you what: all three of those women, uh, they are they are focused on that finish line. They weren't slowing down. They weren't stopping for anything. Uh, they just continued right through that um, timing station. I'm seeing in the distance a lot of yellow. I know we had uh, one of our runners was <laughs> Sylvia, in yellow maybe, shorts. With the yellow shorts. It could okay, be Sylvia yeah. Norska, unless it's another banana. Yeah, let's see. That's the that's unless, the only. Yeah. <laughs> it could be surrounded by bananas. But right? Sil- Sylvia was looking like she was making moves on Marlin, so um, it wouldn't surprise me if she's now in fourth. We, we definitely have some women in the distance. So I'm, I'm, and I can see about 200 meters out from here. So it's really cool as they come around the mountain. You can see, I'm getting a view right through the trees. Um, there's a few more women coming in. So um, I'm going to go ahead and see the distance between. Okay, we have. So even our top five are pretty close. Top. Yeah. And is, is, the, is the, the person at the yellow top quite tall? Can you tell? Nice job. Nice work. You got your eight feet So this is the ahead. battle. This is amazing. Who is and Madalena win? looks great, I'm right? And if she's a 73 minute and a half marathon runner, like this last five miles of the course will very much suit someone like her, maybe more so than somebody like Judith, who's more thought yeah. of as a mountain sport athlete. Although knowing Judith, Judith has been waiting for this downhill for weeks mm. and weeks and weeks. Nice she didn't job. get to nice show job. any of her pace. straight ahead, but you stay to the right for the course, yeah, okay? That looks like. All right, here we go. It doesn't look like we, Sylvia. We, from, we do have a another okay so here's it. our next female what runner yeah female i'm sorry that um this is our next female runner coming up right okay. now it's it's a white top black shorts um long dark hair and, and a ponytail uh, she looks great looking I really good quickly check who that could be because that does not sound like it's um heck Martin. yeah looking so strong let's go there's remy on our big screen here 
You have your aid station straight ahead, but you're going to stay to the right to stay on the course. You look amazing. That's Anna Gibson. Anna Gibson in fourth place here. Anna Gibson, one Looking of the breakout so stars strong. of the season so far. So she Let's was she Anna. was considerably further back earlier in the race. So that hill, you she's clearly put some distance in that. Yeah. Caught up some places on that climb. Okay, Fantastic here comes climbing. yellow shorts, guys. Here okay, comes so our next here's girl Sylvia now in fifth shorts. behind no, I'm, Anna. I'm timing. I'm timing right now. Uh, it's been 25 seconds since Anna has passed me, so we're gonna get a read as soon as uh, as soon as Sylvie comes in. What that distance is between these two women and Anna, uh, like the rest, not really anyone stopping at the aid station. So she's continuing through. Looked very focused. Uh, was ready for some more downhill for which sure. Which is it? Which is a Sylvie. lot of people put in nutrition. Oh, two women. To we got two up. women. They're coming in together. Here we go. You got two ladies working Sylvia together right here. Ladies, you look here. so strong. Nice job. You got your aid station straight ahead. Stay to the right to stay on the course. Nice work, ladies. And they've really been working together all day. They look it seems so like. good. So, so um, um, that could, was I, could 50, I ask Sally? Five seconds. Was was there someone ahead yeah. of Anna Gibson? Was there a female ahead of Black and White Runner? Um, because I was wondering whether that's potentially Tabor Hemming. That was not. I that was not Tabor. No. Okay. No. Okay. It wasn't. I think no. it was one. Of, I think uh, it was sort uh, of it, a you know top twenty male athlete. Yeah, he had, a jacket he had, he had long hair. Yes. You're you're right, Dylan. Thanks, so these Sally. two girls, they came in together. They both look strong. And then uh, let's see, is this another? I'm gonna have to get a little bit. So, Sally, we, we've got Remy Bonet, our men's leader, on the big screen here. You okay. can't see him, but he is awesome. still flying. Doesn't seem to be showing oh, any man. weakness here, even though the men so behind amazing. him were also looking incredibly strong here on the descent. Remy Bonet in the final miles here, trying to put a bow on a victory Gosh, here in an undefeated American trip here, coming oh, off a course good, record performance good. at the Pikes Peak Ascent last weekend. The great Swiss good champion job. cruising down this beautiful flowing but, single track back to the heart of Mammoth Lakes. He is cruising, but I think that could be an issue because Chad is not cruising. <laughs> Chad is a. We have another female suit. coming in, you guys. So this and is, is going to be number number seven, uh, I think. Seven, Se number seven, and she looks strong. Look at this. I We'd always like to look at the to torso, too, how they're moving those arms, and she looks great. We'd expect this to be Let's either go. Tabor, Giselle, Sarah, or Ali is, is, is the likely person. Okay, we got two girls stage. coming in. Uh, they look like they're about 15, 20 seconds apart. Nice job. You got your aid station straight ahead, and you're going to stay to the right to get on the trail. Nice work. You look That's awesome. Tabor. That's Keep Tabor. it up. So yeah. table was an up in fourth Looking at one so point. Um, she's now down in seventh, which is still a still good position. Still very solid. Yeah, yeah. she'll okay, be wanting top ten today because that's that eight gets eight places coming in right behind her. So only about twenty seconds is separating um, number eight right here. Nice work. You look awesome. You got your eight station straight ahead. You're stay to the right, stay on the trail. Keep it up. Looking Ooh, so super good. Super tight in the ladies. Super tight. Now, and Remy is looking good at the front, but we, he only has a two to three minute lead over the back, the chasing three people. Yep. And we do know that two of them are extremely fast ascenders. Let's it seems go, that ladies. Chad Hall is the person that's leading the charge on that. All right, we got nine and ten coming in. Nine and ten women. They're coming in together, and they're looking amazing. Let's go. You got that aid station straight ahead. Stay to the right to stay on the trail. Let's go. I will see you all shortly. I'm just going to jump into the finish line to interview the winner, whether that's Chad or Remy. We yep. do not know yet. So as we get Katie Asmith here to replace David. David, thanks so much for your help today. We'll look forward to hearing and from those 11, athlete 12, interviews 13, at the finish right line here. Them. Let's momentarily. go. You look amazing. Let's go. Oh, my gosh. Straight ahead. You got your so That's Alicia right. Vargo. Right. Awesome yeah, work from awesome. Alicia. Let's go, Alicia. You! Looking so good. Keep it up. You got your aid station to the left and then stay to the right to stay on the course. Cool. So we are back now with race leader Remy Bonet, and we do now have splits through Garage, which is a checkpoint at 14.8 miles on today's course, where Remy Bonet had just under a four minute gap back to Mika Boudin Rousseau. I don't believe that split is accurate. We must have missed a couple runners over that timing mat here, but we do believe we are following race leader Remy Bonet, the Swiss machine here at the front, who's been leading from basically the start of today's race an hour and 48 minutes ago. He should be in the final couple of miles as he makes his way 
down to the heart of Mammoth Lakes, California, just a few feet from where I am sitting here with my new co-host, Katie Asmith. Katie, tell us what you've been seeing this morning. Oh my goodness, you guys. I love racing. <laughs> this has been a blast. And, you know, I think Sally mentioned this too, that I'm used to the longer distance. And this is just, you're on this <laughs> like edge of your seat the whole time. I know, isn't it's it so, so exciting? exciting. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, they can win by just a couple seconds, right? Yeah. So it's, yeah. So can you identify where Remy is? Obviously, so Katie Asmith, for our viewers, is it also a, a local runner here, uh, uh, representing Mammoth proudly here, uh, not racing here today, but helping out in a lot of different capacities. Can you tell exactly where Remy is and how much further he has to go? I mean, I think he has less than a mile. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting really close. This is the... We call it downtown uptown section. Um, this is a really popular mountain bike section yeah. um, of the, the, I mean, he's coming in, cruising into the village. I think he's got it though. <laughs> for all the viewers watching, we have got some fierce competition behind him. Uh, he really has to <laughs> keep this steady pace going because they are on fire. Yeah. He's looking, oh, he's looking over his shoulder yeah. here. Yeah. He knows he's getting close, but he knows that there are a train of talented athletes breathing down his neck here in the closing miles. Remy Bonet had an amazing victory at the Mont Blanc Marathon back in June, had a little bit of a blip and a disappointment at his home country race here as an all in Switzerland in August, but then avenge that disappointment with an amazing historic course record performance of the Pikes Peak Ascent just six days ago. Here he is following it up with potentially another victory here at the Mammoth Trail Fest 26K. So these splits might not be right? They're definitely not right. <laughs> the splits are not right. But yeah. like, for example, if Mika is only whatever, four minutes behind Remy, like it would, I think it would be strange if, you know, those timing splits were inaccurate. I th think we've obviously missed several athletes in between Remy and Mika, but if Mika's sitting, sitting in say like fifth or sixth at this point, and he's only three and a half minutes behind Remy, that probably indicates that there are athletes right on Remy's tail. So it should be a very exciting finish here in just the next few minutes. And I wanna see the camera actually turn <laughs> away from Remy so we can actually see the, the gap for the next right. for second place. And if it's Patrick or Philemon. Uh. So I think our mountain biker here is waiting for second place okay. to pass him. You can try and get a split on that. <laughs> this has just been such a fun day. I hope for all the viewers out there watching, you have seen the majesty of Mammoth Lakes. It is a picture perfect day out there. Cloudless sky, very crisp. As you can tell, I'm still in my puffy. <laughs> uh, my voice is already out and I just started. Yeah. <laughs> uh, were you out on the course? Did you make it up to the top of the mountain? Where no, I wasn't. I wanted to make sure I was back for to take over um, so David could see the finishers. That looks like Chad Hall there. Oh, sorry. Tough to know for sure. So we think Chad is in fourth. He was, he, but we, we saw on camera, like we thought Philemon. he was passing Philemon for third place. Again, unconfirmed, but that is our suspicion. And we think Patrick Kipiego is in second place unless Chad Hall has been able to make up that gap and move into second. But what a beautiful day here, Katie, and how fun it must be for you as a mammoth local to be able to welcome such a huge uh, you know, subset of the trail running community here this weekend, 1500 runners through three days of racing, starting today, 700 runners taking on the 26 K on a picture perfect blue sky, California day. Yeah, I will say I came into town after being out of town for a week and you could feel the energy. It was palpable that the golden trail series was here, which was very fun, but it's not just about the golden trail series. I know we're focusing on that right now, but we have, as you said, uh, you know, 680 <laughs> other runners that yep. are not part of the series that are uh, cruising out there today. So 
It's really exciting. And time. you and I get to co-host tomorrow's yeah. 50K. So mm-hmm. to our viewing audience here, obviously, I hope you've been heavily inspired and motivated by watching today's race. Well, we've got good news for you. We got more racing coming tomorrow, the 50K, and then following that up on Sunday with the Dragon's Back Ascent to round out race weekend. And here's Remy right, Bonet, Remy. race leader here. Definitely oh, in the so close. home stretch here. Okay, we've got Jamil Curry on the cam here, according to our great executive producer, Matt Feldick. So Jamil Curry, an absolute uh, VO2 max Remy's intensity here. We are very Hanging close. onto the wheel of Remy Bonet as he puts a bow on another incredible oh, victory here. I see the village, you guys. You can see it now. He's about to um, exit this forest trail here. Oh, yeah. We frequent this trail with my kids on their mountain bike, so <laughs> I know this part really well. He is entering the village. Oh, Remy Bonet has got it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is historic. I mean, what more can you say uh, about this guy, man? He truly is the best in the world at this point, at this distance, on this type of terrain. Also worth mentioning, he is a world champion as a ski mountaineer, truly one of the best mountain athletes of this generation, 28 years old now. He's been on the scene for many years, but as Mael Backhausen observed yesterday, he's really coming into his own, growing into being, you know, a very mature veteran athlete on the circuit and the best in the world at the same time. Yeah, and we can talk about it, but he has changed coaches um, the past year and has changed his training plan. He really has made a big step up uh, in this past year. Remy Bonet, who used to be the uphill champion only, has now become the versatile yeah. champion. Look at him go. The winner. One last look over his shoulder uh, before breaking the tape. Remy Bonet, his third victory on the Golden Trail World Series. Dominant lead overall in the standings heading into the world final next month. Remy Bonet, take a deep breath, Brilliant. young man. Congratulations. Amazing, amazing. Welcome to California. Yes. yes. <laughs> Race director Tim Thompson. It was good to finish at 26. Yes. Oh, it's good to see that he's tired, isn't it, Katie? It is really good. <laughs> yeah. And there's Steph Gardner from Solomon there getting the content over Remy's left shoulder. I mean, Big he smiles led all from the day. Solomon crew. Wire to wire. Way to go, Remy. God, this kid is just so impressive, man. So just to remind our viewers that he crushed Matt Carpenter's 30-year historic course record on Pikes Peak Ascent just last weekend. <laughs> yep. So he was coming into this race with tired legs. We should mention too, they did run a new course here in the second edition of the 26K at the Mammoth Trail Fest. So this will be the new course record for the 26K here as well. And we'll see how it measures up against this competition today. And I think it will be the standard to follow in years to come for Remy Bonet. So he was going for uh, sub two was our our prediction, um, and I, I we heard him say at the at the press conference that he was hoping for a 145. So he, so he was about 155, 155 and change. Yeah. yeah, a little harder than expected, but altitude will get to you. No, sorry, official time. It looks like 154.49. Yeah, there you go. Amazing running from Remy, and. We were suspicious earlier that the gap had closed behind him. We're now approaching three minutes since Remy has finished. So that's a fairly comfortable margin of victory here for Remy in only a 26 kilometer race. Amazing, amazing run again from this Swiss Dynamo. So just to put this in perspective, this was a 7.06 minute per mile average. That's that's <laughs> absolutely insane. sick. 17 miles with 3,700 feet of climbing. He averaged 706 pace. Come on, I couldn't go run a flat eight miler at 706 <laughs> pace right now. Oh, oh, it's so depressing and so inspiring at the same time. Oh, and just with dragons back in the middle of that, whew, to be able to. <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna cut, cut to, to the the finish line interview here in just a sec.
Yeah, everyone say that they are not fast in the downhill, but uh, I think I should have more than four minutes. The fact that this is this race is compared to Sierra's and Alves, but we'll come back to the it. Sounds like Chad Hall. We can hear people cheering from where we sit here. So Chad Hall, California boy, coming back to Mammoth there and starting his long weekend off what with a, a second place here. Another world-class result. Watching him last year at this breakthrough race in the 50K, I mean, all of us just had our mouths to the ground in shock at how fast he was, so... So probably about a four and a half minute margin of victory here. Big hug from race director, Tim Tollefson. Chad Hall, what a beast. Oh, no way. That's Mika. Mika. So it could be that Philemon and Patrick maybe missed a turn or they faded heavily here. Mika, this is a huge breakthrough result for him. Fresh out of college where he went to Stanford, part of the trail team. This youngster apparently trains here in Mammoth fairly often. Here, a podium performance on the world's biggest stage in sub-ultra distance racing. A huge result for this young man. David Roach texted me. Uh, his coach, he's a swap athlete, coach, uh, texted me earlier and was like, he's going to dominate. Oh, yeah. And this is a huge breakout performance for him. That is great. So David Roach, I think, has been in the chat. So, David, feel free to drop some intel on young Mika here. He's making a lot of new fans here today. I'm sure they'd love to hear his story and any insight that you can provide. But Mika Boudon Rousseau, two Californians in the top three. And this is Roberto this De Lorenzi. Is Roberto. So two Swiss athletes and two Californians in the top four here. Roberto was sixth at the Pikes Peak Ascent last weekend, just behind American sub ultra distance icon Joe Gray, who finished in fifth. Roberto looking a little bit more fresh than his Brooks teammate there. Mika is still struggling to sit up. Amazing, inspiring racing here. And just for our viewers, Katie, maybe you can provide a little perspective. Like, this is the heart of the village of Mammoth Lakes, isn't yep. it? So this is, um, oh, we've got another runner coming in. Here's Sam Hendry. Sam Hendry. A great wow, result from him for fifth. Amazing. Top five with this kind of competition. That's a huge yeah. race result for Sam. So, so Sam, before we get to, you know, this specific spot and where uh, our viewers are looking at. Sam Hendry, also a really great young up and coming athlete. He raced Nordic skiing collegiately at the University of Utah. He was actually teammates with Olympian and world dominant trail runner, Sophia Lockley. So Sam Hendry, a fifth place performance here, just like Remy, just like Sophia Lockley, showing that you can be a great winter sport athlete on skis and also turn around and have world-class performances as a trail runner in the summer months. It's super fun to see the versatility inherent in athletes like Remy, like Sam, like Sophia, et cetera. And yeah, Mika is torn up, yeah, man. You love, you love to see it. I mean, I'm sure he'll rehydrate and feel better here in a few minutes, but he emptied the tank to achieve this result here today inspiring stuff so he lives just on the other side of the eastern he lives on the western sierra side yeah. and he'll come over to to mammoth to train oh, let's try and get chad on the mic yeah you know it's funny like all of us californians we ran this uh, course called mountain back back in high school so it's like we just learned how to rip the downhills on those like big open roads so i just kind of sent it on that first downhill caught up but they got ran into third place um, and it got kind of crazy. We all got lost at various points. Kind of well, unfortunately, I think some of my just really lost out there somewhere. Uh, but yeah, oh, I mean, bummer. Like, really fun course. Like, Did you hear that? That's Daniel Osans. So, sixth place, Daniel Osans. If you couldn't hear that, Chad Hall said that everybody got lost at various points. So it seems that uh, there's Eli Hemming uh, in Eli. seventh. So it seems like Patrick and Philemon must have gotten lost somewhere in these closing miles, which is unfortunate. But again, we mentioned it earlier, it is part of the game. 
That'll be a disappointing learning experience for them. I think that's Pettis, I think, is his last name, Italian athlete coming in in, I think that was ninth place now. Yeah, Daniel Pettis. Daniel Pettis. Another Brooks athlete. If we look at MK Sullivan, Hi, MK. who I think is going to give us some perspective here in just a little bit. We don't have audio yet from MK, so hang tight to our viewing audience here. We are awaiting the top 10, I believe, rounding out the top 10 will be our next finisher, if I'm counting accurately. But what a race, man. Oh my what gosh. an incredible race. So officially, Remy Bonet finish 154.49. Second place, Chad Hall, 158.25. So that's... Not what? as close as we thought it yeah. was going to be. Something happened yeah. with Patrick and Philip. So a little under four minutes there. Mika, 158.48. Roberto De Lorenzi, just under that two-hour threshold, 159.54, followed by Sam Hendry, 200.25, which I think was exactly Remy Bonet's time on Pikes Peak last weekend. So Sam Hendry... Huge breakout performance for him in six. So now we've got times from Daniel Osans. He was 202.17. Eli Hemming, 202.31. Daniel Pettis from Italy, 202.44. Incredible. So about eight minutes separating the top eight between Remy and Daniel Pettis. And we got yeah. a little bit of a gap back here. Oh, yeah, and we've got Joseph Jonathan in the chat here saying two in the top five for the trail team. That's a great observation here with both Mika and Sam Hendry, the trail team, if you haven't heard us say this already today, led by Andy Wacker, who's out on who's the race racing course. today. How cool is that? Inspiration was to provide a little bit more structure and support and resources for younger athletes to come specifically into trail running and specifically into sub ultra distance trail running. We do think that Anna Gibson is in top five position in the women's race as well, also part of that trail team. So if she's able to hold on to that, that is going to be a very proud weekend of results for Andy Wacker and that crew. So just to review what we have for the women's race right now, we don't have a recent split. Oh, here's um, Philemon. Oh, here's Philemon. Oh, we'll get his story. He oh. must have made a wrong turn. Oh, that's going to be a disappointing finish for him just because he was in the lead. So this is, I think, actually ninth place. So I had miscounted. We think Philemon coming in here in ninth. So a reminder, at mile 11, he was third. Right. So... In just six, a little less than six miles, he... Yeah, you, you can see, you know, having run on some of those trails here in the final 8 to 10K, and here's Patrick just on his heels. Top 10. The top 10s, well even gentlemen. if they did miss a turn, it's good to bounce back from frustration and adversity to still round out a top 10 performance. Absolutely world-class. Yeah. Still... So he's linked considering up with uh, Jesse now or a little bit of extra time and distance. But I was just going to say that, you know, there are a lot of like braided trails there in those final eight to 10 K. So you can see how it might get confusing if you hadn't spent any time on the course. I'm sure the race organization did as much as they could to mark things effectively. Yeah, it so really it just happens. Something it happens. happens. It happens. And you know, when it's so tight like this, they're following each other. Yeah. So it's not that surprising that Philemon and Patrick kind of made a wrong turn together. There's Andy Wacker, yeah, Andy, Andy Wacker with the trail Solid team 11. in 11th. It was fun to chat with him yesterday too, man. He seems to have great perspective. Now, oh wait, we've got this finish line interview. I'll shut up. We know that's the race that you you really want to win more than anything else. Does the fact that you've come here today, you've beaten all challenges on a course like the one you want to win, does that give you confidence? Does that change how you feel about next year? Yeah, I know that uh, Ciazinal is a race for me, then like I win it. So this year was bad luck because I got uh, a few weeks before the race, but uh, next year we'll be back on it and uh, 
I will yeah, do whatever, all what I can to, to win this race. And when you were at the top, um, did you did you consciously change gear on the down? No, uh, were there points when you knew your lead? And um, and how were you managing that second half of the race? Yeah, when I saw Greg in the yes. Donnie, he told me that I had a big gap, so I slowed down a bit. And okay, we are cutting back to race leader Judith Wider. We'll make sure that that interview is recorded. I'm sure there will be a lot of people who want to hear from men's champion Remy Bonet, but we'll make sure to get his perspective in various digital formats over the next few hours. Big congrats to Remy again on that victory. So we believe Judith Wider in the lead of the women's race. Judith, also a Swiss athlete. Could and we a see? mom of two. And a mom of two. Absolutely incredibly impressive. Judith Wider, second place last weekend behind Sophia Lockley on the big hill in southern Colorado at Pikes Peak Ascent. An amazing athlete. She comes from like an orienteering background, if I'm not mistaken. I think she's three-time champion, yeah, world, world champion, champion in orienteering. Yeah, so um, yeah, great trail runner, Swiss athlete. So Swiss runners in position to take both victories here today in Mammoth Lakes. Pretty awesome. She's got an incredible story. So she has a mom of two. Um, with one of her pregnancies, she had a stroke and was able to come back and train with the best and is now <laughs> just dominating this Golden Trail series. How impressive. Uh, very cool story. She, uh, this is her first time to the United States, which is kind of an interesting fact. And what a great trip it's been for her. If she's right. able to take a second last weekend and six days later, bring home the victory here. She is in the closing, probably mile here. She is in the home stretch. So it'll be very interesting to see the gap back to second place now. We did see. So it looks like Danny's in second. So from what we have, it was about at mile, uh, almost mile 15, like 14.7 or so. Um, it looks like Danny was about 40 seconds behind Judith. It's interesting because we did have Madalena Floria from Romania leading the race through. Here's Danny Moreno here, probably uh, less okay. than a minute behind Judith. Yes. Danny Moreno, the local legend here, sitting in second place. Oh, Foot cry. on the Damn gas it. for sure. <laughs> there might be Good some job, weeping Danny. in the studio. <laughs> Danny, as I said many times here on the broadcast, wanted to go Hail Mary mode today. She was racing aggressively at the beginning, up near the front all day, and she's still chasing down Judith, and Judith probably knows that Danny is hot on her heels. So we do know Judith to be one of the best descenders in the Golden Trail series. Mm -hmm. um, that's what she's known for. So I think Danny's strategy was to go out hard so that she could try and hold on for that descent because uh, she knew that there were a couple of really fast descenders, Judith being one of them. Uh, and this is a, you have to be a strong descender in this course. Yeah. And, so. and Danny predicted that the women's finishing time would be between 2.10 and 2.15. So she's probably right, right on there. here as they both we're at 211 right now yeah 211 on the clock here so and danny moreno also you know predicted that it would be about two hours for the men's race as well remy bonet finishing just under 155 so probably fairly <sighs> accurate too on her women's winning time prediction again this is a new course here this year these athletes are setting a new standard that future generations of mammal mammoth trail fest participants will measure themselves against and this has just got to feel like goosebump moment for Danny. Had the amount of times she's run on this trail is countless. Uh, these are her trails, her local trails. This has got to feel really good. She's going to close this down. She with looks the second great place. too, she doesn't looks she? Great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just to give the viewers an understanding of what happened. So at the last check, we had at again like a mile fourteen point seven or so, and again it's a seventeen-ish mile race. Uh, Danny had a four and a half minute lead on Florea. So um, I think Danny's got second place pretty sealed. That's, we'll see that's what happens. That's interesting because Madalena Floria had, I mean, she was in the lead of that three pack coming through that, was it McClay Aid Station around mile McCoy. 11? Mm -hmm. McCoy Aid Station. So mile 11 or so. She looked, could be that she maybe missed close. a turn too, or yeah. she's, she's fading for sure because, you know, to give up that type of time in only a few miles. There's Max King. Ah! Max King with a big smile on his face. Love to see it. Coming off a 24-hour 
adventure race, I think just a week ago, Max King, the all time legend of the sport. What an icon. Yeah, so good. Max, and thanks for coming to Mammoth Lakes. You can always count on him too, to like, you know, really grin through the suffering, even when he's not having his best day, you know, he will do his best to get to the finish line and always have a smile and a good attitude, even when things are. Yeah, I think there are a few people out there that love the sport as yeah, much as Max King. He's so great, man. Yeah. So, so great. So will he be our 12th that we haven't seen another? No, well, I think we're much we, further we back on the course now, so it's hard to know. To we know can refresh can our results list here, but definitely a pretty significant gap here behind Danny Moreno to third place. So it'll be interesting to see if the next female runner will be Madalena Floria. Can't ID that runner, but uh, if you're in the chat and you can, feel free to shout him out. But it'll be interesting to see if Anna Gibson has passed Madalena Floria to move yeah. into third place. And if she has, that would be a remarkable back-to-back -back weekend of racing for Anna Gibson, a third place last weekend at Pikes Peak, if she's able to do the double podium here on the Golden <laughs> Trail World Series. What a year for Anna. She's amazing, man. I really think she is going to be an absolute superstar in the sport over the next decade plus. I mean, I hadn't heard her name before Broken Arrow this yeah. year. Same. Neither so, did I. Yeah, I think. And that looked like Dan Kurtz, another great East Coast runner. Favorite. Yeah. So, so he's not having the race that he wanted. He, he was saying that he got a really bad case of COVID after the world championships that put him on the shelf for most of the summer, and he was just bouncing back to form now. Mm, I couldn't do that one. So I just did want to say that Malinosa, Malin went – was four sec five seconds back from Anna, so from Anna, excuse me, Anna Gibson at the last aid station. So basically, they're running together. Yeah. So we've got a really tight yeah, women's really, race really for third. tight race for the top five. Really. Mm -hmm. Hey, so we've got a few more results here from the men's finish line. I just want to give a big shout out to Chris Vargo who pulls yes. out a 14th here today. Amazing after <laughs> six years away from the race. 41 years old, so he's our top masters athlete. His wife, Alicia Vargo, brought home an amazing seventh place at last weekend's Pikes Peak Ascent. And Alicia, I think, is battling it out for a top 10 here again today. But a 14th for Chris Vargo after six years away she from racing. This, this race, really awesome result. Congratulations so, to like, him. Like and then Darren race, Thomas, one of my favorite guys, more, finishing so 15. So. out there uh, with no expectation, with the main goal just being to have fun. Uh, and I mean, today went really well. Uh, it, I'm just so stoked. Because you, you were back in maybe seventh, eighth, um, halfway up the climb. Like, were you consciously um, holding back, or uh, do you know yourself to be a better downhiller and you, you thought you'd catch up? Yeah, I think holding back on the climb was the plan the whole way. I mean, I knew that this is this was a long race and the downhill was long, so I, it was all about running my own race and conserving a little bit of energy because I knew that. Uh, if I got to the, uh, the top of the climb with my legs underneath me, then I could really rip the downhill and make up a lot of ground. And um, at what point did you did you know you were in the fight for the podium? Oh, Jesus I had no in. idea until I crossed the finish line. <laughs> I was I was like kind of, I was just trying to catch people one by one on the downhill, just focused on my own race, just one mile at a time, one step at a time, just trying to enjoy myself and power through the the cramps I was getting at the end. And so, uh, yeah, it was a pretty special feeling finally making it to the line and, and realizing I had finished that well. Now, we, we, so, we've heard um, last week I was speaking to Andy Wackick and, and uh, Okay, and we are back here with women's leader Judith Wider here with a quarter mile to go until the finish line. We think this is Jamil Curry with the camera again. He's going to go VO2 max mode to try and hang on to Judith's wheel here in the final quarter mile to the finish line here. Amazing victory here for Judith. Again, coming off a of second place last weekend, her first trip to the United States, going home with two podium finishes, including a victory here today. Super, super impressive. So she is a physical therapist by trade, but she has gone all in for the sport <laughs> uh, since uh, her transfer to from orienteering to trail running. And her husband is one of the Swiss trail coaches mm. for the trail team. Um, and her, I guess his partner, so the other coach is her coach. And she switched her training a lot this year. Um, she's done a ton of cross training, which is quite an inspiration to me personally. <laughs> uh, but she has really taken on Nordic skiing. She's actually a Nordic ski coach. Huh. Um, and she 
has been cycling uh, a lot. She says she uses that as a as an incredible resource for her as a aging athlete <laughs> in the sense uh, compared to the rest of the women out there. How old is she? Let's see. Thirty five years yeah. old. Okay. Judith. But that's young. great. I mean, <laughs> for, I mean, but typically with these sub ultra distance races in the Golden Trail World Series, like Sophia Lockley's twenty three, I totally. think, right? Remy Bonet's twenty eight. Look at Jamil Look at Jamil. Rip Jamil. It is awesome to see thirty-five year old athlete coming home bringing a victory. And she's a had such a robust here today. career. Yeah. Mm. Awesome job from go. Judith Wider. Your twenty twenty-three Mammoth Trail Fest twenty-six K champion. Winning here on the Golden Trail She's World Series. It. Like we were mentioning earlier, a victory on the Golden Trail yeah. World Series is absolutely one of the best achievements in the entire sport of trail running. 218-18 unofficially on the clock for the Swiss champion Judith Wider. Tim Tolson, race director, ringing a big cowbell, as is appropriate with this type of achievement, especially with a Swiss athlete. Great work, Judith. Gave it everything. So Danny will be here any second. To remind now. everybody, she came off a second place finish just last weekend yep. at the Pikes Peak Ascent. So this is just incredible. And she's getting out of the way here. And she knows that Danny Moreno will be here in just a few seconds. Danny, Danny Moreno. Mammoth oh, Flakes in <laughs> absolute full sprint yeah. here. <laughs> Way to go, Danny. 219.59. Two. Well, the, the clock at the finish line and the clock on our screen are not totally synchronized, so we'll get an official time. But an amazing, amazing second place there from Danny. And Max King <laughs> comes in. <laughs> What a duo, they battled it out. <clears throat> Danny Moreno really wanted this win. I think she's gonna be really happy with the second place. It has to be. <clears throat> she gave everything and she really ran a gutsy race from the get-go. Um, and here's oh. here's uh, Madalena Floria, yep. Romanian athlete. We think in third place here, so it doesn't look like Anna Gibson has overtaken Madalena. So she, this is Floria, Madeline Floria. She was sixth in the world champs at the 14K. She's seventh, Sears and all. Look at this, big at hug, that. sportsmanship oh. here at the finish line. Oh, Best so sport in the world. Hugs and congratulations and mutual respect and admiration between the top two finishers here today. Danny herself said, Judith is the favorite here this weekend. So I'm sure Danny is really happy with this second place result, especially I'm finishing behind an athlete I know she admires. Should we give it a shout out to the Subhub podcast? Which we absolutely because should. Danny Moreno and MK Sullivan, who's also here uh, and who will be racing tomorrow, uh, interviewed Judith Weider. Highly recommend that podcast if you guys are interested. Incredible interview. So go back and check that out. Uh, pretty cool to have Danny Moreno herself taking in second to the champion, Judith, and interviewing her, and who I know she looks up to a lot. She's definitely an inspiration. Yeah, I'm sure they're gonna be doing a lot of fun podcasts after this weekend's races too, leading into the Golden Trail World Series final, which will take place in Italy next month. So yeah, go subscribe to the Subhub podcast. But man, Madalena's looking great. Wow. So it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to hear if maybe she had a navigational mishap because she was leading the race at that McCoy Aid Station, roughly mile 11. And she, it doesn't look like she's fading, right? So the fact that there is this several minute gap between her and the victory probably indicates that maybe something went wrong for her, but yeah. an awesome podium performance. Yeah, and you gotta remember, Judith Wider is one of the best descenders in the sport. Yep. And Danny Moreno, these are her local trails and is coming in fresh right. after not having the OCC she wanted. So, uh, you know, I think that this is a huge performance for Madeline. Yeah, I think she just missed that turn. Yeah, she just missed that turn. So, anyway, yeah, a runner that's new to me, and we were talking with David about Madalena here today. He was saying that she's run a 73-minute half marathon, so has, you know, world-class leg speed here and uh, translating it to the trails super effectively. A Romanian athlete. There's been a lot of really strong Romanians emerging into the global trail running 
ecosystem recently. This is a huge performance for her. This actually yeah. might be one of her best performances in this Golden Trail series, at least. I believe it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, third place here. Sixth at the World Championships, like you just said, Katie. Seventh at Sears and All. Yeah. Um, I believe she led the climb at Sears she and All. She did, yeah. So, she did. which just shows how gutsy she is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a performance. Yeah, and Cor Corinne was saying in the chat, I think, that uh, Madalena was leading the race up the climb here today. We were having a little bit of spotty coverage up there, so we weren't entirely sure, but she looks happy, man. Yay. 233, <laughs> or sorry, 223 finish. or so. Really, really fantastic run from her for third place here today. Looks like she, a little emotional understanding <laughs> what she's achieved. An awesome run. And just to remind everybody, this is a Romanian athlete. We had a Swiss athlete. This is Norway coming in, right? I believe. No, this is Malinosa. This, this is, is Malinosa. S Spaniard coming ah. in. So this is interesting. So she's made up time. Oh, there's there's Anna Gibson. There's Anna, Anna Gibson, Gibson in fourth. Awesome run wow, from Anna, man. Anna. I'm a, now a, an enormous Anna Gibson fan. I just followed Malinosa, who we see on our screen here, finishing in fifth on Instagram, like last week at around the Pikes Peak Marathon. I'm now a big fan of hers. Only 20 years old, Malinosa, Spaniard, certainly representing this next generation of world class trail runners, bringing home a top she's five. She's happy. She like she's pumped. Yeah. Danny says she's one of the nicest people on the planet. Yeah, so Danny was telling me, too, that Sarah Alonzo comes from, I think, a soccer background. I believe they're teammates. Yeah, so yeah. her and Malin were teammates playing soccer growing up. Sarah Alonzo is, you know, world-class trail runner at this point, and I think she may have persuaded uh, Malinosa to get into the sport as we see Sylvia Nordskar great Norwegian athlete coming in okay. in six. This is incredibly close, so dynamic, close. dramatic racing in the women's field here today. Absolutely astonishing. A big shout out to the coverage team who's bringing this story to life. Okay, this top eight, what do we have now? I think we have top seven or seven eight or in. Eight. Just minutes, the fourth through seventh. Have, we're just literally less than a couple minutes apart. We got Matt Seidel in the studio now in a banana costume. <laughs> Absolutely fatigued from shredding behind our leaders here today. There's Mala Osa and Sylvia Norskar. Big hugs and mutual respect. David was saying earlier that the two of them have a bit of a rivalry because I think they're sitting in like third and fourth place overall, overall. in the Golden Trail World Series. So looks like Malin will be uh, will take the advantage in that sort of race within the race 22 that seconds amazing Incredible. so what what was the gap between oh that was from the garage no. so we're still awaiting the accurate splits yep. from these last few finishers that we've seen so we haven't seen Tabor Hemming yet she we're expecting her to be coming through any minute and Elise Ponset should be close behind Here's her Tabor there she is from Kremlin Colorado Tabor Hemming her husband, Eli, I think, brought home a seventh here today. She's, what, probably an eighth. So great weekend of racing I here she's for seventh. the Hemming team. Yeah. She's in seventh, too. All right. Awesome run from Tabor Hemming. We've mentioned it a couple of times, but their goal this weekend was to replace their disappointing performances at Sierra Zanal back in August to improve their overall standings on the Golden Trail World Series. Eli Hemming is sitting in fourth in the top American on the men's side in the Golden Trail World Series. So this may bump him into the top three heading into the world final next month, but awesome racing from Team Hemming this weekend. So there she is, way to go, Tabor. She always has such a great attitude about yeah. it all. Another swap athlete, <laughs> shout awesome. out. So um, just to say, so third through sixth place, we're a minute and 30 seconds apart. Oh my gosh. What a raise. Ah. Unbelievable. So we're okay. expecting Elise Ponset should be coming in soon. Ali Ostrander behind her. And then Rachel Tamaja, Zick, I'm saying her name yeah. wrong, uh, behind Ali, so. Alio. 
Who's this, this must be Elise Ponset. Oh yes, okay, Elise Ponset, French athlete here. Who has really been a consistent member of the yep. Golden Trail series for a while now. It is known really for her incredible descending. That is her strong suit and what a performance today. Well done, eighth place finish. Way to go. Big hub from Philip Ryder there. Oh, Ali O. Ali O. Wow, that was a close finish. Holy, wow. Ali O. Strander. That was just, so she put in a huge gap. So at mile 14 and a half or so, Ali was a minute back from Elise. So she put in a huge push yep. to almost close that gap. Wow. Ali was one of the country's best high school athletes back in the day when she was an All-American at Boise State University, ran professionally for a few years, now making her way into the trail running world. A native Alaskan now living in Seattle, Washington, coming up here to altitude to redline against the world's best trail runners, bringing home in a top 10. That She's got to be proud of that one. This must be Rachel Thomas here. This is Rachel. She has represented the United States in the mountain championships. Where's she so from? She is from Arizona. Arizona. I think she's a Flagstaff girl. Yeah. Matt Feldick is fist pumping <laughs> here in the background here. The Mountain Outpost team obviously hailing from Arizona as well. And that rounds out the top 10 women here today. So maybe give us a quick recap, Katie. I uh, we, we may have to wait a minute before we get the official splits, but it's 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 happening i think we've we've got him in so judith wider taking home the win <sighs> mammoth trail fast 26k our second annual first this is the the sixth golden um trail series event it's basically the end of the uh of the regular season coming into italy for the finals in mid-october so judith will be high on the lead there danny moreno local legend here who is this is this alicia don't recognize that runner. Brooks Kit bringing home 11th place. I'm sure our friends this in the chat This might be Julia can, Font Gomez. Oh, that's probably it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Wow, yeah, okay. Julia says on her bib there. So there's Julia. Shout out to Julia Font Gomez. And here's Alicia there's Vargo. Alicia. Alicia Vargo bringing home 12th place. Her husband Chris taking home 14th. Mother of three. Wow, what a performance. Awesome run from Alicia. She was seventh last week in the Pikes Peak Ascent. Great, great run from her. Also from Flagstaff, yeah. They live in Breckenridge oh, now. Oh, they do. They yeah, moved. for the okay. last couple of years. All right, so Judith Wider in first. Danny Moreno, local legend, taking home second place. Look at her with her kids, Alicia Vargo. So officially, it looks like, what is that, like 50 seconds between the between two of them? Between the two. Mm-hmm. That's pretty comfortable for yeah. 26K. Judith really showed her dominance That's here. That's close. But, That's close. But Danny was in the lead most of the day, and Judith really took over in the last couple miles. So I'm really, really happy for Danny. I think Danny's going to be really happy with that. She gave it her all. Look at this photo. Top five women. So we've got Judith Weider, Danny Moreno, Madalena Florea, Anna Gibson, Malinosa with fifth place. There we go. What a great image of this. And we need to give a big shout out to our production team. Yeah, absolutely, we do. Oh, my goodness. Mountain House Outpost. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Katie and I are going to be back in here tomorrow to broadcast the entirety of the 50K. And then we're going to round out race weekend and Sunday with the Dragons Back Ascent. So make sure you cancel all your weekend plans. This is brew, our first time doing a live stream at Mammoth a few Trail cups Fest. Of, a few pots of coffee and kick your feet up. You can get your runs in in the afternoon. There's Sarah Alonzo, who uh, I think came through in 13th. She's looking. I think that's not the day that Sarah was looking for. Yeah. Um, you know, she, she's been injured for much of the year, and I know she said in the press conference before Pike's Peak Ascent last weekend that she hadn't run over 20K all year. So Pike's Peak Ascent was the longest run of her year, let alone the longest race of her year. So she's still building back to full strength. So I'm sure she's a little disappointed being outside the top 10 here today. But Sarah Alonzo has all the tools to win a race like this. So when she's fully healthy, she will be one of the superstars of the sport for the next decade plus. Another Spaniard. 
There's Tim rushing over a nice bottle of water like a great race director would. Judith Wider, we see here on the screen, she is going to be at the mothers, the runner mothers, run, mother runners panel tonight. So if you guys are in town, please stop by at six o'clock local time. She's going to be a part of our panel. Um, so hopefully we'll see you there. There's a lot more happening with Mammoth Trail Fest live stream. We will see you tomorrow. Yeah, so let's just wind down now. And thanks so much to all of our viewers who joined us today. Again, make sure you join us tomorrow. Matt, let us know what time we go live tomorrow morning. So we'll go, go live at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Race starts at 7.30. But just to recap, all the female finishers we have in at this point before we wrap up today, you stopped at top five. That was Malin Oso, who finished in 224.06. Then we had Sylvia Norskar, 224.36. Tabor Henning, 226.31. Elise Ponset, 227.34. Ali Ostrander, 227.51. Rachel Tomasic, 228.47. Julia Font Gomez, 229.46. In 11th, Alicia Vargo in 12th, 230.04. And in 13th, Sarah Alonzo, 231-16. Katie Asmuth, what a day. What a day. And we're just getting warmed up. I know. <laughs> this is so fun. I feel like it, we have to remind ourselves that we have a, hundreds of runners behind these yeah. folks. So um, it, the day is not over. <laughs> Several hundred runners as we Several cut hundred. back to studio here. Thank you all so much for joining us. A big shout out to Matt Feldick, Jamil Curry, and the whole Mountain Outpost team. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you log back on at 7 a.m. sharp tomorrow. Make it 6.59. Set the timer on your coffee machine. Katie and I will be in here. You have nothing else to do tomorrow. Energized and excited. For Katie Asmuth, I'm Dylan Bowen.